Redskins lead 19 to 3. Detroit lost the toss. The Redskins will receive, and that means Eddie Murray will kick off, and Keith Griffin is the deep man. Short kick, very short. Griffin at the 15, and knocked down at the 23-yard line. Paul Butcher, Mr. Jeff, 20. Paul Butcher made the tackle, and Dre Schrader comes on. Here's the line defense that he will face this afternoon. And they played very well last week in a win over the Cowboys. Eric Williams, Jerry Ball, the rookie, and Keith Ferguson, number 77. Jerry Ball was super at nose guard last week. And the linebackers, Jimmy Williams, Shelton Robinson, Dennis Gibson, and Michael Kofer. Michael Kofer, two sacks, good pass rusher. And the secondary, Galloway McNorton, Rafael Cherry, and James Griffin. Rafael, former Redskin. First and ten. Officially from the 24, they hand it to George Rogers. He comes right, seats, uh, searches a hole, and plunges out near the 29-yard line. The Redskin offense, and there's some changes. Jay Schrader is back at quarterback, along with Rogers, Monk, Clark, Warren, and Clint Didier. Talented group. But the changes come in the offensive line, where Ed Simmons gets the start at left guard, his third start. Wally McKenzie takes over at center, Thielman and Mark May. I think they're bigger and stronger and better than the original Hogs. Schrader on second down and five. They hand it to Rodgers again. He tries to sweep the left side and does. Close for the first down. It appears he got it at the 35-yard line. Bruce McNorton, number 29, made the tackle. Vern, you shouldn't be able to load up a formation one side, like set all your strength to the left, and then still run over there because the defense should be heading that way. See, last week, Rodgers had 80 yards in the loss at Philadelphia. Talked to him in the locker room Friday. He, after practice, he was on the treadmill running for 20 minutes. He says he does it every day. He likes that for endurance reasons, plus it helps him make way in on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> First down and 10. Just underway. Art Monk comes in motion, number 81. And Schrader will throw for the first time this afternoon. Safe pass into the flat. That'll give him a feeling of confidence. Jay coming off the worst game of his short career, 16 of 46, last week in the loss to Philadelphia. About 35% complete. Now, he's had five games in his career under 40% complete. So it'll probably happen again. But I doubt he will have that problem today. I think he'll be back up in the 50% category. Dick, is that a good tactic to try a safe little pass like that for the for the quarterback? Hey, I, I really believe, yeah. Positive gains early in the ball game builds confidence, especially if you're a little bit shaky coming in. But he did not appear to be shaky in confidence in conversing with him in the locker room the last couple of days. Second and six, Kelvin Bryant in the lineup now, and Monk again in motion. Schrader has it batted up in the air, incomplete. I think that was Eric Williams that got his hand up in there. Eric Williams is manned on Mark May, 73. Eric Williams to the right center of your screen. He getting the pass rush. See him right now, center 70. Head butts him right now. Now quarterback sets up inside the pocket to the left of the screen. Now Eric, he sees him. Cocks the arm. That's the hand. Put it up. Right hand goes up. Plays volleyball. Good job. Good defensive reaction by Eric Williams. Williams playing with a little bit of a hip injury. And a third down and six now. 13-17 to go. First quarter. Schrader back has time. Pressure from Mike Kofer. And Schrader is on the run. If he can get by the linebacker, which he can't, he might have picked up the first down. And Jimmy Williams comes flying over to make the tackle. Williams playing in his hometown, a graduate of Woodrow H Wilson High School here in town. He had to buy 18 tickets, which uh, anybody who's tried to get a ticket to a Redskin game here knows how That's tough one is. He needed 18 more. But he said since it's live at home, some people are going to have to stay home and watch the ball game. He's probably their most consistent defensive football player over the years, and especially this year. That brings on Steve Cox on fourth down, and Pete Manley, who had a 61-yard return to help uh, establish the victory last week, is back to return it. That's a fairly short kick. Manley makes the fair catch at the 23-yard line. A 36-yard punt, nothing on the return, and Detroit has the ball for the first time. First start as a starting quarterback, his first win rather last week. And here's the defense he faces this afternoon. Charles Mann, who is the leader in sacks for the Redskins, along with Butts, Grant, and Manley. Boy, they get after him. <laughs> they have about 34 sacks on the season. And the linebackers, Kaufman, Olkowitz, and Coleman. And the defensive secondary, 
Daryl Green, Barry Wilburn, Alvin Walton, and Todd Bowles. A young secondary. First and ten, Lions. Two and six on the year. They hand it off to the short man, the fullback, James Jones. And he gets across the 25. Lion offense will have Long at quarterback. And James Jones and Gary James in the backfield. Pete Manley and Jeff Chadwick at the wideouts. Pete Manley's having an outstanding year. Already caught 30 balls. And the offensive line, Lomas Brown, Scott Barrow, Steve Mott, Kevin Glover at right guard, Harvey Salem, and the tight end, Mark Lewis. The tackles match up good. They might have some problems with the offensive guard versus the defensive tackles. Backs in the eye on second down, a play fake, and Long is back. Looks deep right side, has a man open. That's caught by Chadwick, and he's got a first down at the 43. Great comeback route. He pushed the defender, Barry Wilburn, deep, pushed him deep, then came back for the ball. Good timing, good execution. 18-yard gain, Barry Wilburn guarded by, uh, or rather guarding Jeff Chadwick. Interesting what the other wideout, Pete Manley, told us last night. He hopes he doesn't see Daryl Green. Yeah, I know it, but that that time, Daryl Green was on him, and chances are they're going to flop him. He flop him to him. I, he said, I'd just soon run pass patterns against Wilburn as I would <laughs> Daryl Green. Manley comes left, and he's got Green on him. Wilburn and Chadwick are wide to the right on first and ten. James Jones skips to the outside, gets momentarily by Charles Mann, but he then makes the tackle after a gain of a couple. Tough to run on these Redskins. They're number six on defense. They just don't give you many yards running. Their philosophy, Vern, is to run the football offensively and control it because they believe that's the way to win. So in contrast, they can't allow the opponent to run the football, mm -hmm. and they're doing a much better job this year than last year in defense in the run. See Dave Butts, Charles Mann, Barry Wilburn. Second down. At eight. Gary James caught behind the line and dropped. It'll be third and long. Good job by Dexter Manley. They had Dexter Manley burn split out side the tight end, and the linebacker shifted in on the tight end, and he just really came down hard and, and collapsed everything to the inside. Good defensive play by Big Dexter. Now Daryl Grant comes out, Dave Butts comes out, Marcus Koch is in. And Manley starts uh, urging the crowd on. Oh, he loves it, and he's a showman, this guy. Here's one of the problems for Detroit, third and long. They've got a third and nine right now. They're last in the league, 27% at the conversion rate. Last year, the worst in the league was 29%. Max coming after Blitz him. is coming. Boom! Long with a quick release, as Manley open for the first down at the Washington 44 and a half yard line. Alvin Walton, number 20, hit him right after he threw the football. Now you'll see in the shotgun what an advantage it is to be back off the line of scrimmage. Here he is, now see Walton in the middle of your screen, number 40, no one hits him, but with that quick release, he gets it off against that man-to-man -man coverage. Good job by Pete Manley getting open. Take a look at this hit now, left of your screen, right in the middle, bang, Walton. A legal hit. He hit him right as he threw the ball. One of the things we want to focus on today is that quick release of Chuck Long. You are very impressed with that. Very impressed with him. You don't have to have as strong an arm as you get rid of it that quickly. Play fake. Long to throw on first down. Right side again. They test Wilburn. Same pattern. And Chadwick pushes him deep again and makes the catch. And the crowd... Uh, it's tough. It's tough to defend that when it's so well timed and so well executed. With the play action fake burn, you have no help underneath that out pattern, no linebacker underneath it because they're playing run. So it's strictly one on one. And better to give them the out than give them the deep one. But pretty quick, they'll challenge him deep or go out and up on him. Yeah, they are in the process of setting something up while they're uh, succeeding those plays. Barry Wilburn, number 45, is tied for the number one interceptor in the league. So don't. <laughs> Don't get overconfident throwing the ball in his direction. From the 32, first and 10. Up the middle, no game. So the ground game is not working, but the passing game is. Chuck Long, of course, in his second season out of the University of Iowa. And after seven starts, here comparison with Marino Elway. Chuck Long with seven touchdowns and nine interceptions. See, Marino leads that list with 13 and four. His percent complete is impressive for a young quarterback. Very impressive. Uh, to me, he's uh, got it all. He's got it all. Second and ten. No score early in the game. Play Once fake. Again. Alvin Walton coming on the blitz. Catch is made. Flag is down. 
Gary James caught it out of the backfield. But we'll see about the infraction. Alvin Walton has one sack on the season, so you know. I think Alvin Walton, the safety blitz man, was offside. <laughs> He's anxious to get to the quarterback. See if that's the call, number 40. Here's Ben Bright. Side 71, they declined the penalty at first down. The defense is moving around an awful lot in trying to create the free rusher. Now, you're going to see to the left of your screen, number 40, left corner. He's going to blitz. Look at the defensive line shifting. They covered everybody in the middle, so they can't get any help. Here comes Alvin Walton. Good move. See, nice poise by Chuck Long. Didn't panic. Has a nice touch on the ball. He can throw that variety. Lions have been impressive on this opening drive, hitting the passes. Long now has his team with a first down inside the 20. James Jones comes back to the left and cuts inside the 15 down to the 12-yard line where Neil Olkowitz makes the tackle. Good block by Gary James, number 32, the halfback. Number 32, pretty good blocker. Lions have scored 23 of 28 times inside the 20, but only 10 of those have been touchdowns. You'd like that to be like, uh, oh, 18 touchdowns, five field goals if you're doing a super job inside the 20. And, of course, with only two wins, it shows they haven't get, been getting enough touchdowns down in that situation area. Right? Darrell Rogers, Coach Baker to the left, the offensive coordinator. Second and five, no score. 8.21 to go, opening quarter, and Long to throw again. This time he works on the left side, but nobody is there. And Long ad-libs it, That's goes it. in the end zone deep. It'll be overthrown and incomplete. Last week in that same situation, he threw an interception. See, and he's got to learn that he gets in, he's got him in field goal range. Number one, I don't take a sack. If I get in a scramble situation, I throw it in the stands. I don't get the interception. He threw the interception against Dallas. It was Bill Bates who got the interception on Long in the end zone last week. And then Detroit returned the favor when James Griffin intercepted Danny White. The Lions went on to score on a Gary James touchdown, went in front, and maintained that lead in 27-17 victory. Chuck Long was bubbling with enthusiasm yesterday when we visited with him. That one win just gave him so much more confidence than he had the week prior. Out of the shotgun on third and five. Oops! There is a big mix-up between Steve Mott and Chuck Long. Last week, they fumbled the close-in snap twice. Twice. They fumbled it twice. Evidently, he thought he heard the snap called, <laughs> and it wasn't called. And sometimes what happens in that, some defensive lineman gets up there and yells, hike. Here it is. You'll see the quarterback is really not even in his stance. Look at his feet together. He's moving around. He's looking to the right, and here comes the ball. I have heard defensive people make a hike call in those situations and throw the center off. I'm not, that happens. It's not legal, but it does happen. Eddie Murray has been having a disastrous season, but he did hit two from in close last week. He was one of his last eight prior to that. Eddie Murray's not a sight guy, though. I think he'll kick his way out of problems. That's a 35-yard kick, and a flag is down. The kick is good if it stands, but there is an infraction. Holding on them. What was the distance of that field goal? 35. 35. Number 52 came in the game. He did not report. 52 played backfield, did not report. You know what that does to him, Vern? That Five takes him. Five yards. The, Murray's having problems. He's 2 for 4 inside the 40. He's 0 for 5 outside the 40. They just move him back five yards into where he has not made one. I'll tell you, if I was a kicker now, I might walk up there and kick that guy with my good kicking foot. <laughs> This, this guy is not a psych artist. I really believe he'll have the mental discipline to work his way through the slump. He has not experienced slumps in his kicking career. I'm, I'm having a problem figure out, figuring out why Steve Mott was checking back into the game since he had just made the bad snap. They called the wrong number. Okay. Well, I thought that was the case. Murray's kick. He got it. So that helps end the slump. And the Detroit Lions, impressive in their opening drive of the ballgame, have taken a 3-0 lead in the first quarter. Happen often, but the Detroit Lions uh, have gone in front of the Washington Redskins. Doesn't happen to the Redskins that they are behind. And they trail now 3-0 with 7-16 to go in the first quarter. As the Lions looked bright. 
in the opening offensive series. Taking advantage of the man-to-man -man coverage, which they said they were going to do. That's their game plan. Take advantage of the man-to-man. -man. If, if the offensive line can hold up against the pass rush and give them time to attack that man-to-man, -man, it could be a long day for the Skins. Keith Griffin, the deep man. Eddie Murray will kick off and does. Griffin at the two. A little open field hitting going on. Did you see Paul Butcher come down through there? <laughs> yes. He took on the wedge. He only ricocheted through it, and he missed most of the wedge. When the <laughs> oh, Love boy. those kind of guys. They play with great intensity. Love there is Paul guys. Butcher. First half scoring is quite con a contrast for these two teams. For the Lions on the left-hand side, they've been outscored in the first quarter 65-39, to 39, and in the second. And in contrast, the Redskins have outscored opponents by 60 points in the first half. But now, Washington finds itself trailing, and they are 13-18 and 18 under Joe Gibbs when they have fallen behind first. There's a quick out, and it was thrown behind Art Monk. have jumped out on top of St. Louis, 7-3. They're going to be on this young man today. The fans are going to get on him because there was controversy all week. Even some of it created from an, uh, a radio talk show on Monday night. To, uh, well, Bobby Mitchell, manager. the assistant yeah. general manager, was quoted as saying he had heard about players on the sidelines asking why Joe Gibbs didn't replace Schrader with Doug Williams last week. And later issued apology for making that statement. So, uh, in some conversation. Good job. Just Rogers up the middle. Dropped at the 26. Follow George Rogers, number 38, in point of attack. Now here he's going to go to the right. Here now, watch him break up there. Now Simmons, 76, gets a nice kick out block on Dennis Gibson. Gets allows him to run up in there. Good job by Big Ed Simmons at 280 pounds. Bryant comes in and uh, goes to the left side. Third and one, officially. Into the flat, Art Monk, first down, Washington. And Monk is spilled inbounds. Jay Schrader told me, said, Coach, last week I made all the right reads and I threw the ball to the right person. I just threw it incomplete. <laughs> he said, there's no one to blame for that loss but me. Defense, drop back pass, Kofor coming around the outside, just a little slant pattern out there against the man and man, just trying for the first down, not the big play, just get the first down, ball control. Well, despite the criticism, Jay Schrader has completed two short passes. Two out of four early in the game, first and ten Redskins, and they hand it to Rodgers again, he tests the middle and finds that it's Yielding. He's out to the 41-yard line. The tackle made by Michael Kofer, number 55. A great lead block by 85, Don Warren, who's the tight end. Was We'll see him appear from the left side of your screen. Line is blocking. Now see the tight end come back in there. He was lined up in a running back position. Good blocking down there, controlling the line of scrimmage. If these guys are allowed to run the football, you can't beat them. And a big gain on first down of seven yards and second down and three. Rodgers with 26 yards now on four carries. They hand it to Rodgers again. Go back to what's working for you. Yeah, they just went the other way. Now this time it was a little different look. Same play, but they used the, the tight end lined up in a wing back position and ran him in motion. This is what they do. Take a look at it from the end zone. Now you'll see to the left of your screen, 85, Don Warren coming in. Now watch him go up in the point of attack. They block down, see him turn. He kicks out, does a nice job of creating that hole. Also good blocking by Ed Simmons, number 76, on Dennis Gibson, the linebacker. Rodgers off to a good start, and when a runner is over 100 yards, the Redskins are 34 and 0. Rodgers comes to the right side. Good defensive play by Jimmy Williams, number 59. He forced the counter play to bounce outside. And he told us last night, he says, Coach, what we're going to do is constrict that play from the outside in and make him bounce outside with the running back all by himself. If we can do that, I think we can stop him. He did a nice job. Now watch on this replay. Right in the middle of your screen, 59. Now see the tight end's going to block down. Now see him pinch it down. He's going to get underneath that guard with his left shoulder. See, now that forces the running back to go outside. There he is with no blockers. Well done. Second and seven. Kelvin Bryant in the lineup, and this should be a pass play. Three-man rush. 
Schrader drills it on the line. That's a first down, Washington, at the 39-yard line. Don Warren, the tight end, makes the catch. Only his third of the year. Yeah, I was going to say, Don Warren's hands are rusty. He only got two balls this year. He had 20 last year, 188 in his career. Something I think would be interesting for the folks who are watching to keep track of now, the disparity between the number of runs and the number of passes for the Redskins. Well, they run the ball an average of 35 times a game since Joe Gibbs took over this football team. And it is critical to them, as you mentioned earlier. They, they're 34 and 0 when a running back has run for 100 yards. And if you allow them to do that, chances are they're going to beat you. They've run it six times here in the first quarter. They trail 3 0. Play fake, Schrader back. Lots of time. Good fake by Schrader. But good downfield coverage, and he throws it away. Flag down. Shelton Robinson. Shelton Robinson. He's upset. I do think that Shelton made contact early, gave him a shove. There are two flags, as a matter of fact. There so. was contact downfield, too. They might call uh, defensive holding downfield. Yeah, there's both yep. of them. Yeah, I saw that. You can't hit the man downfield after that five yards. Referee. Illegal contact on the defense 45. That's a five-yard penalty. That's a first down. Rafael Cherry, the former Redskin, is the man guilty of the penalty. Watch Jay Schrader, though, Dick, after he had delivered the pass. This is the price you pay under pressure to throw a football in the National Football League. He gets it, legal hit, gets the helmet right in the gut, then gets stuffed over backwards. Michael Coker, number 55, getting good pressure. First and 10, Washington, 3.05 to go first quarter. Lions lead at 3 nothing. Timmy Smith in the backfield, he gets the carry. And the rookie from Texas Tech goes to the left, tackled by Shelton Robinson. So the first man to carry the ball other than George Rogers. That's a gain of three. Now Kelvin Bryant comes back into the lineup. Kelvin Bryant is a more versatile back than all the other backs. Rogers is the big, strong, powerful runner, and he's going to have the good rush per carry average. This guy can break the longer run a little better, and he's also a much better receiver. His problem has been fragility. He's uh, been hurt a lot. Yeah. Second and eight, officially. Monk in motion. There's the counter. Oh, oh what a job. nice tackle. Good Jimmy job. Williams helps stuff it. And Danny Salamua. Out of Arizona State. Seventh round draft choice this year. 285 pounds. Now you'll notice the nose guard in the middle of your screen, number 97. He's playing right in the center in front of the quarterback. Let's follow him. Don't watch the ball. He's going to come in from behind. He's fighting his way through. There he goes. The reason he was able to make that play is the play was turned back into him. And he didn't have to pursue very far to get there. Third and ten. Gary Clark out wide right. Schrader just yelled out at him. Four-man rush by the Lions. Schrader with time across the middle, short of the first down. Oh, no, maybe down. not. As Good the effort. tackle was missed by Rafael Cherry. Fine effort by Ricky Saunders, number 83. He was going to try to get away and score his first touchdown on the season. He's caught 11 balls. You see, they bluff, the, they bluff here the blitz. They don't come with it. They back out, then go zone. Now here's the late linebacker dog. Ball coming down there. Now watch him spin back off this. Good effort. Good effort. Not concerned about getting hit. Concerned about making the first down. It's short. Short by a foot. He'll go for it. And here comes the real Hogs. I mean, this is a huge lineup coming in right now. These guys are bigger than Hogs. They're, they're what would we call them? Beef? I don't know. How about Jumbo? Jumbo, yeah. That's the name of the formation. Caravello comes in. Warren. Let's see who else we've got in. Didier. Cliff Griffin usually comes in, too. Here's Not the jumbo Cliff package. Is this Reggie Branch in there? Yeah, Reggie's in there, number 29 at fullback. Look at the weights. Fourth and one. Rodgers. First down at the 19-yard line. Boy, I'll tell you something. At 51 years old, I wouldn't mind following Reggie Branch at the point of attack. That guy, he really blocks well. He's a vicious blocker. The fullback, number 29, Reggie Bass. Now, here you are. Deep handoff. 
James Griffin, 34, the safety goes to meet it and gets knocked on his back there by the lead blocker, number 29. Just enough cushion in there to make the first down. Rodgers with 40 yards on seven carries. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter. 13th play of the drive. Yep. Blitz coming, Schrader almost picked off. Jimmy Williams had it right in his mitts. On that fourth and one, once again, here's the lineup the Redskins employ. Check the weights, 315, 305, 275, and 290. And in the backfield, including Schrader, who's at 220, their average weight of that bunch is 263 pounds. Oh, and that's a lot of beef. High price beef. You know something, they weigh made more than that than they did Friday when they weighed in, too. <laughs> Second down at 10. Schrader back. Into the flat. Galvin Bryant. Fumble the ball. He got it Scramble, back. who got it? He got it back. Bryant recovers. And Bryant and Jimmy Williams have at each other. Verbally. Kelvin Bryant, as we said earlier in the broadcast, to the left center of your screen, comes out. He's the better receiver. Now, watch him sticking right there to freeze the linebacker. Jimmy does a pretty good job, but he does freeze him just enough to get outside there and head for the first down. Jimmy gets him down. He fumbles the ball, fights back, and gets it. First down. End of the first quarter. 3 nothing Lions. Part of the crowd, part of the well-dressed crowd at RFK Stadium. You know, a couple of those guys are executives at IBM. You know that, don't you? <laughs> Third and six. Lions trail three. Uh, Lions lead three nothing as we get the second quarter underway. Kelvin Bryant to the left side. 95% of the time this formation is passed. It is now. Trader has a man open. Gary Clark overthrows him. I don't know how open he was. He, he looked really not open. open yeah. Because the defenders in the line of flight of that ball and running out of the back of the end zone, it's it's an interception rather than a completion more often than not. Coming right at you, 84, Gary Clark, Chris Sheffield, number 28. He gives him a stick right there and breaks away, but he looks open. But see, that ball has to come down the chute, drop right down on top of him for it to be complete. That's why it was thrown too far. That will bring on Ali Hajishik. 33-yard attempt to tie it up. He's two for three from this distance right now. And for the season since replacing Jess Atkinson, three of five. High snap. Good kick. Yeah, just popped it through. Impressive drive for the Redskins, and we're tied at three. To either Gary Lee or Wolf Oak, it'll be Gary Lee at the one. Comes right. Doesn't get much blocking help, and a flag is thrown. We're going to have an illegal block above the back. And I would venture to say it's going to be on number 62, Curtis Green. He's already that arguing penalty, the case. That penalty's almost automatic. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is holding. One of these days. Offensive have... holding, number 62, 10 yards. First down. Daryl Rogers not too pleased with that call. Well, let's they, they see where that puts him back there now. In jail. Yeah. And Chuck Long comes back onto the field. Jets with an early lead over Kansas City, and Buffalo leads Cleveland by four in the second quarter. Dallas has scored early and taken a 7 nothing edge over New England. Chuck Long. Four out of five. Don't think he'll have throwing on the mind right now. He wouldn't be against play action. Manly in motion. They pitch it to Gary James, and he is knocked off his feet at the eight-yard line. What is real tough in that situation. Oh, James is a little bit banged up. He may want to come out. What is tough in that situation, they move the big defensive end, Charles Mann, number 71, over and head up on the tight end, and the linebacker back off. Now the tight end has to block a defensive end, and normally that's a physical mismatch. Carl Bernard, a rookie from southwest Louisiana, has taken Gary James' place. Second and ten. He's a free agent. Audible by Chuck Long. Two-step drop. Into the left flat. 
caught at the 14-yard line. Pete Manley made the catch. One of the interesting matchups in the line today, Lomas Brown and Dexter Manley. Right in the middle of your screen, Lomas Brown, number 75, blocking on Dexter Manley. Dexter Manley was really getting mentally prepared to play this game. He had a lot of picture of Lomas Brown in his locker all week and talked to it every time he walked by. It I said some nasty things to him. It wasn't autographed. No, it wasn't autographed. <laughs> Lomas Brown had an excellent game last week against Jim Jeffcoat. He's he been hampered a little bit by a knee injury, but he played well last week. Third and four, Long has to call timeout. 30-second clock was about to run out on him. 13-17 left, first half tied at three. Third and four, Detroit. They operate from their own 14-yard line, a 3-3 ball game with 13-17 to go. Report from the bench is that Gary James bruised his shoulder. Could return. They're tending to him right now. He was already playing with sprained ligaments in his right thumb. Sustained last week in the win over Dallas. James Jones in the backfield along with Carl Bernard. Third and four, Detroit. 3-3 game. Quick count. Manley is open. On the pass, a little behind him. Picked off. Darrell Green, number 28. Flag is down. Did that ball hit the turf? I thought it was close. I think they'll want to look at it on replay. He might have had possession long enough to call it complete and then dropped it when he hit the ground. One on Detroit, pushed an official. He's out of the ball game. Well, that really hurts the Lions because that's Mark Lewis, the tight end. They have Vito Cab, who they just signed. 15-yard penalty. What was that they called it on? On Mark Lewis for pushing an official. They have waived Derek Ramsey. They traded Jimmy Giles. Rob Rubick is hurt. They're down to Vito Cab. And they're looking at this on the replay. The tight end right in the middle of your screen now, number 81. Now see him working back to the left. Oh, boy. I still haven't seen anybody. Uh, well, he must have pushed him say after he got 81? up. Did he say 51 or 81? 81. It's Lewis. To the right corner of your screen now that we maybe can see this being shoved here. There he put his right hand and pushed and walked away. That's an immature move right there. But what does that do to the Lions now with really Vito Cap? They have to go with a, a tight end that just showed up to there Tuesday. Again, they had waved Derek Ramsey. They had traded Jimmy Giles. Rubik is out with arthroscopic injury. Take a look at it again. Here he is in the middle of your screen, number 81. Now, see, he's talking to him. First he down. just shoves him with his right hand like that. The official right there is going to call it, throw him out of the football game. You can't put your hands on those guys, even though many times you'd like to. <laughs> Coach and player. They looked at it on replay. Lewis is out. And there was not... Uh, interception plus a penalty tacked to it. Right, and from the 11, as Green gets the interception... and Bryant comes left, and another flag comes flying. Dennis Gibson, number 98, made the tackle. You know, penalties right now at midseason are up 9% over last year on the average. That penalty goes against the Redskins. Number 85 on the offense, illegal hand, pushing it back. 10 yards, first down. against Don Warren and it'll be first and 20. Rams lead St. Louis 14 to 3 as they are in quest of their second victory of the year and Miami's jumped out to a 2 TD lead over Indianapolis. Tampa Bay and Minnesota still scoreless in the second quarter. Pittsburgh with an early lead over Houston. 3-3 ball game here, 12.48 to go. Green's interception plus the penalty on the ejection of Mark Lewis. And now Schrader back to throw on first and 20 across the middle, incomplete.
problems with last week, Dick, resulted in high throws. He threw it high he again here. And if you're going to miss a guy, though, throwing down into your end zone, you got to throw it high. you got to go over the top. You go low, then someone coming underneath you can pick it off. So you got to go high. You spent a lot of time looking at film of Jay Schrader this week, and you detected something he was doing, though, right? Well, I, I personally feel he throws much better to his left than he does to his right because I think he personally I think he locks out a little bit throwing to his right and that makes the ball go a little higher. Second down at 20, 3-3 ball game, 12-37 to go. First half. Pressure's on, fumble, and they miss the pickup and dive for the ball. The Lions were thinking touchdown. As it is, they get the recovery. I think that was a delayed dog. It didn't come right now. Then he came late. Let's take a look at it now. We've got an end zone shot. All right, here he's getting a drop back pass. Now, here comes the linebacker, Jimmy Williams. See, he did not dog right now. That really makes it tough because the person assigned to him will release into the pattern. See, or a lineman will turn to help somebody else. And then he came. And, boy, that is really tough. Good defensive reaction by Jimmy Williams. Kofer got the recovery. Jimmy Williams almost picked it up and had he been able to do so it would have been a touchdown here he is to the left side of your screen see him sitting on the line of scrimmage waiting now he sees this person that's supposed to block him doing something else then he comes really tough the replay official is chuck heberling and they are looking at this last play try to determine whether it was a forward pass i'm not sure The Redskins don't normally turn the football over. That's a fumble. First down. Okay. Jay Schrader on the bench, and look at it again. Oh, yeah, that's a fumble all the way. That's a fumble. These fans are going to get on Jay a little bit. Kofer makes the recovery. Still tied at three. 12.27 to go first half. Long pumps once, flips it into the flat. Vito Cab makes his first catch as a lion. You know him. He, he played for you in Philadelphia. I drafted him in the third round in 1982. Uh, personally, I think if I were still coaching in Philadelphia, he'd still be there playing. And, you know, everybody as a coach looks for different attributes in a player. But this guy should be able to play for a long time in the National Football League. What he lacked as a rookie was concentration, not intelligence, concentration. And I darn near drove this guy crazy because I chewed him up one side and down the other every day. But he was becoming a player. He was claimed on waivers off the Browns, Cleveland Browns, earlier this week. James Jones hit behind the line, struggles back, and picks up about a yard. It'll be third and one. He Charles has great Mann balance. Forced it. He has real good balance. When you hit him, you had to hit him down the middle because he'll ricochet and then keep going upfield. I want to go back about the importance of that ejection to Mark Lewis. How much double tight end offense do the Lions normally use? Well, they'll use two tight ends and goal line short yardage. So they'll have they'll be preparing right now on a sideline a backup guy, normally an offensive lineman, that will report and play the tight end position. Well, here's an example of it right now. Third and two. They're, they're playing this as a longer yardage situation. They sure are. They've got the one tight end cab to the left. Play fake. Long back. Fires it short. He made it. Forward progress should give him the first yeah. down. Monty Coleman made the tackle, and Vito Cab makes his second catch. I don't think in his wildest dreams he envisioned playing this integral a role in his first game with the Lions. Uh, no, the other... Here he is to the right side of your screen. Play action to the left. Now, you'll see Vito Cab was checking. Now, he'll dump out to the right side of your screen. There he is, just a drop-off man, and he gets a great hit and holds on to the football there by Monty Coleman, number 51. No, that was Mel Kaufman. Vito Cab comes tight right. 11.01 to go in the first half. Carl Bernard skips over the tackle. That's another Lion first down. Good, well-executed running play. Only eight yards on the season before today. Harvey Salem, number 73, the big offensive tackle. See him pull. He goes up into the hole, gets a wall off block, bounces, heads up in there again, gets out of the way of the running back, and there goes Bernard for a nice game. Tackle trap. 10.30 to go, first half. Harvey Salem, number 73. The Detroit Lions have regained a confidence level that they were not playing with prior to last week's game. 
Play fake. Long in trouble. Sacked. He was not sacked at all last week. And Charles Mann gets his seventh of the year. Flag is down. I think there's going to be pass interference or defensive holding called on Barry Wilburn over on the other side. There was contact all the way. See, Chuck made a play action fake, Vern, and he wanted to come back and throw over to his left. Let's see what he calls. Defensive holding. And when he turned back to throw, Wilburn and... Holding number 45 on a defense, five yards in the line of scrimmage, and that's a first down. When he turned back to throw, Wilburn and the receiver, Jeff Chadwick, were, were making contact, and that, therefore they called a holding penalty. So wipe out the sack, give the Lions a first down at the 33 in a 3-3 ball game. Boy, I tell you, that's a critical play right there. We you wipe the... out that sack. Barry Wilburn comes to the left side. Works on Chadwick again. It's Manley and Green tight left, or wide left. James Jones gets a block and surges inside the 30 near the 27-yard line. Neil Olkowitz makes the tackle. Carl Bernard, number 25, not a real big guy for running back. He's 200 pounds, which is big enough, but he did a good job in blocking there. Monty Coleman getting upset there, number 51. Here's Bernard, number 25, will come from the left side of your screen. He'll appear on the snap. Here he comes. Now he's going to get a block on the outside linebacker there, number 55, Mel Coughlin. Kicks him out, and they turn up inside for a nice game. 18 to go. First half. 3-3 ball game. Second down and four. Chuck Long is 7 of 9 for 73 yards. Ad Manley coming on a slant pattern. Gets it. James Jones starts left and comes back right. And that might be enough to move the chain. And an injured player. That may be Lomas Brown down in the backfield. Lomas has had a knee that's been bothering, and he's been playing with it. He played well last week, as we earlier said, and maybe he injured that knee right now. Former number one draft choice in 1985, and the trainers are out on the field. For the 161st week out of the last 162, a sellout crowd, the only bad week in that record was the, during the replacement games when they didn't sell out and officially ended the streak. We've got 8.49 to go, and Eric Sanders has taken Lomas Brown spot at left tackle. How'd you like that to line up in front of Dexter Manley, your first shot out and haven't been playing active for a long time? Here comes Manley. Long is back. Sanders does a good job on Manley. And the release pass over the middle of Bernard is good into the 19-yard line. Tackle made at that spot. I'll bring you up to date in case you just joined us. We've had two field goals. Murray from 40 yards, Hajijik from 33, long as 9 of 11 for 80 yards. One pass interception, that by Daryl Green, but the impact of that pass interception negated by a Jay Schrader fumble, and after that fumble, the Lions have driven from midfield down to the 19-yard line. Officially, they'll call it the 20. 3-3 game, and this is the second Lion timeout. That may become important. We've got 7.57 to go in the first half, and we're still tied at three. On the Redskins' sideline, perhaps the highest-paid backup in the NFL, Doug Williams is warming up. Don't know if Joe Gibbs is going to make a quarterback change. That would be out of character for him. But there's been a clamor in the press and among the fans this week. And there is uh, the beginning of a quarterback controversy in Washington. On second down, long back. Oh, holding. Bernard can't away. make the catch, and we're going to have a penalty against Detroit. they got to call holding on Detroit. I'll bet it's on Eric Sanders. And if so, Dexter Manley will start waving to the crowd again. Somebody. I mean, they reach out. He just pulled him down. That's it? Yeah. See, that's going to be a real problem because Eric Sanders is not a bad football player, but he hasn't been playing regularly. Now, all of a sudden, you got to go in against holding one of the best pass rushers. number 64. Ten yards. Well, I'll tell you, better hold him than let him get to the quarterback. I know that. Right. Number 64, you'll see on the left side of your screen, left-hand corner. See, now he's stretched out. He's got too much weight forward that way, and he can't maintain balance, and the only thing he can do is hold it. Just fundamentals, not real sharp right there. And we have a report from the Lion bench that Lomas Brown has strained knee ligaments, but 
the good news is he probably will be back. Five penalties on Detroit now. It's, been, it's something that's been bothering him. Second down, 17. Three wide receiver set. Long with some pressure. One hopper, incomplete. <laughs> you should have seen Dexter Manley that time. <laughs> Dexter's upset. He got his helmet off. <laughs> Look at that. Hands on his hips. He and Charles Mann. <laughs> Well, that'll be a fun matchup for the rest of the afternoon. I don't know how much fun Eric Sanders is going to have. Manley with three sacks on the year. And it's third and 17 now. 7.47 to go. They gave him a credit for a third of a sack. A third of a sack. A third of a sack, too. So he has three and a third sacks. <laughs> Doug Williams continues to warm up on the sideline. Quick hot man. Chadwick makes the catch, and that will give Eddie Murray a better shot at the field goal to break the tie on fourth down. See, now the Redskins came after him with the blitz. They read the blitz. They broke off the pattern, ran the slant pattern. Get it. They don't make the first down, but they improve the field goal percentage. Murray, who had gone one of eight during a, a horrid stretch, and that one was a 23-yarder, has now connected on his last three in succession. And for his career, he's hitting... 72 percent so uh, that really was an unusual streak for him he's number three or four all-time percentage kicker so yeah you know that he's going to come back 34 yard effort here to break the tie he's four for four from this distance this season now he's four for five maybe the streak isn't over well, excuse me, I read that wrong. He was two for four from that distance. Now from he's two for five. Now he's two for five. Move that is totally out of character. Joe Gibbs has yanked his starting quarterback and replaced him with Doug Williams. No injury. Jay Schrader is standing at the 47-yard line, and imagine what he must be going through as Williams has taken his place. Williams came on in the opening game as a backup after Schrader was injured and was brilliant. And he'll go deep on the first play. Airs it out for Gary Clark, incomplete. And pretty good coverage from Bruce McNaughton. But you know Joe Gibbs very well, Dick. Aren't you a little surprised at this move? I'm surprised that he's made the move already. Uh, I mean, of course, you know, you're mentally prepared because of last week's performance. But I really didn't see Jay do anything that wrong or badly. And now what happens if... Uh, what if Doug doesn't do real well? I guess you go back with Jay. But, hey, that's all part of maturing as a quarterback, and Jay will handle it. Doug's been in that situation before. They'll work this thing out. It was two years ago this weekend on a Monday night game that Jay Schrader electrified this crowd and Redskin fans throughout when he replaced Joe Theismann after Theismann went down to the broken leg against the New York Giants. Hand off. Kelvin Bryant. Skips through. Nice move. Oh, what a dandy run. The man that made that tackle downfield was the nose tackle that originally was double teamed at the line of scrimmage. Now focus your attention on the two big offensive linemen to the left side of your screen. Simmons 76, Jacoby. Now there's the whole now good running ability there. See? Now follow 97 to the right side of your screen. The nose guard that was blocked on the line of scrimmage. He hustled all the way back downfield to make the play. Good running ability by Kelvin Bryant. He can make the long runs. Bryant for the year with 205 coming in. First and 10, Washington. 3 3 ball game. 6 10 to go in the first half. Rodgers. Good wham block that time by 85. But good what? Wham block. A wham block. Wham block is when someone out of the backfield comes in and blocks a down lineman. Most people call that a wham block or a sucker block. Is there such a thing as a wham trap? Yes, there is a wham trap. Ermel yeah. Allen taught me that yes. years ago. Hey, you're, I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Indianapolis and Miami are tied at 14. That yeah. indirectly was a wham trap. Really. Wham trap. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure I got this terminology down. <laughs> Sometimes this lingo is a little tough. Timeout has been called by Doug Williams, who comes over to talk with Joe Gibbs. And Jay Schrader stays out of the huddle. Well, Doug is, Williams is throwing 61% in the games that he played. Now, we saw him play very well against Atlanta, but they lost. Right. But he did do a good job, threw a couple touchdown passes. The I've always thought he was a very accurate long ball thrower. And that, I mean, he, it's impossible to, I think, outrun his arm. He can get the ball downfield. 
don't forget, this is the first of two games on CBS this afternoon, and following our game, many of you will see the Giants against Philadelphia, and others of you will see Green Bay against Seattle. Check the local listing for the game to be televised in your area. Philadelphia has real momentum. That could be a real helmet buster in Vet Stadium. Now, Jay Schrader, in his fourth year, third-round draft choice out of UCLA. This guy, Schrader, almost started out too fast. Mm -hmm. You know, he went way beyond expectation right now. So everybody compares his performance today with what he did when he started out so fast. And it's impossible to keep getting better on those kind of performances as a young quarterback. You know, you're bound to have some slow days. I'm just so surprised that Joe Gibbs made this switch when he did and under the circumstances. As you said, they don't know exactly what Schrader had done wrong. Second down and six. Williams with a fake reverse, and nobody is open. Now Jimmy Williams traces Doug Williams, and Doug Williams is hit from behind and knocked down with a first down at the 41. What they wanted to do in faking the reverse was go to an X post here to uh, Gary Clark, what they call in their huddle transcontinental. That's what they wanted to do. But the safety did a good job of staying in the hole. Now you watch, this was good faking. Quarterback will come down, he'll fake now to Rodgers. See him fake in there. Not a real good hand fake. Rogers picks up a block. Now he holds the ball on his hip. He's looking downfield for the transcontinental pattern all the way into the end zone. It's not there. Now, not known for his running ability, you know, with that bad knee, he just hobbles upfield for a few positive yards. 4.50 to go in the half. 3-3 ball game. And Williams drills it right side. Art Monk has the catch. And is tackled at the 47-yard line by Dwayne Galloway. Now, you have to realize this. Doug Williams does not take an offensive snap with the first unit all through practice. He's running the scout team, isn't he? He runs the scout team, and Doug, Jay Schroeder, Schrader takes all the snaps. But on the other field during offensive period, Doug is over there with the quarterback coach, assimilating all the offensive plays, runs in passes with Jerry Rome, the quarterback coach. And they go through everything in the game plan, but not with 11 guys. <laughs> Second down and three in a 3-3 game. 4.09 to go in the half. Rodgers comes left. Gets a good block. First down and out of bounds and limping as he gets to the sideline. He might have pulled a muscle. And sits down immediately. He might have pulled a muscle because he was limping. He had running hamstring. room. He might have pulled a hamstring. He had running room. He had cutback room. Rodgers, number 38, in the middle of your screen. There's good blocking by the line. They've got it sealed off. Look at that hole in there. Now, see him right now. He's limping with that left leg. See him right here. Normally, that is a hamstring-type pull. Type injury. 56 yards on nine carries. Another first down for the Redskins at the 43 in a 3-3 ball game. Williams. Keith Griffin gets the handoff in place of George Rodgers. And... Moves it down to the 40. Keith Griffin has been very productive in the backup roles. He's always done a good job. They're, they're actually fooling around with his knee. Maybe he cut a cartilage or something in there. Has one floating around. Yeah. Prevent defense comes on for the Lions as they continue to tend to George Rogers. But this guy, Keith Griffin, can run. He has a career best of 164 yards running in one game. So he knows which way to go. in motion. Play fake to Timmy Smith. And Williams across the middle. Gary Clark hauled down by James Griffin. First down Redskins at the 16. Gain of 25. Now there are two things that happen on this play, Vern. The play action fake freezes the, the linebackers. See, nice fake here. Guard pull. See all the linebackers playing run now. As you look downfield, there's nobody in pass defense. So when the receiver, Clark, comes across in that in pattern, there's no help underneath. Good play, good execution. 2.50 to go in the half. Gary Clark makes the grab. That's his first of the game. Play fake again. Williams throws it away. Good coverage from Rafael Cherry on Art Monk. Yeah, they wanted to go a little out post pattern there with an out underneath it, but they defensed it real well, and the safety moved over and got in the hole, and he couldn't throw it. Good read. Now, an inexperienced quarterback may have tried to fire that one in there, and the safety pick it off. Rodgers up. Trying to test what apparently is a knee injury. Joe Jacoby. 
at 305 pounds. That's what they list him at, with 315. And Ed Simmons, who's listed as 305. That's the left side of the line. That's why the field leans this way. That's right. Didier in motion on second and 10. Blitz coming. Williams being chased by William Gay finds Calvin Bryant. Touchdown, Washington. out of the backfield. What he does is he comes out of the backfield, gives coverage man a little stick to the outside and breaks up underneath him. Everybody else playing man-to-man. -man. He's free. Takes it in for the score. Ali Hajashik for the extra point. The report from the bench. George Rogers with a strained groin muscle. Taking a look from the end zone. Kelvin Bryant to the left side of your screen, number 24. Now watch him come out of the backfield. Now watch him stick the man to the outside, moves back inside. There he is, running free. Everyone else was covered man on man. Breaks it into the end zone for a touchdown. Cherry could not get him down, number 45. So the Redskins break the tie. Doug Williams into the ball game in place of Jay Schrader as Joe Gibbs yanks his starting quarterback at the six and a half minute mark of the first half. And immediately Williams fires the team downfield and catches Kelvin Bryant, a 15-yard touchdown reception. Well, we watched practice Friday. Doug Williams did not take an offensive snap. Jay Schrader ran every play. Goal line short yardage inside the 20 and team two-minute drill everything. Doug Williams was playing Chuck Long all week. Yeah. Interesting because he thought he was going to be traded before the season. Came very Joe, close to going to the Raiders. Right, and Joe Gibbs called him in and said, look, here's the deal. The Raiders were not willing to give us enough. Mm -hmm. And Doug said, I understand. I'm disappointed by I understand. And if you want to talk about disappointment, how about Jay Schrader right now? He's a big boy. He's mature enough to handle it, and he has a lot of years to play, and he may be playing next Sunday. Oh. He'll be out of the end zone. Wolfolk let it bounce. Come on, Butch, you have enough experience to take that ball. Usually when that happens, there's communication uh, problems between the two guys back there. You got it? No, I got it. No, you take it. No, I'll take it. You know? 80-yard drive, 10 plays. Williams gets the touchdown toss, and it took 433. And that was after the Lions had missed a field goal that would have given them a 6-3 lead. Lomas Brown, number 75, back in the lineup against Dexter Manley. 2-19 remaining first half. 10-3, Washington. Carl Bernard. Dexter Manley. Manley wins that battle. Look at Manley. He thinks he really made a great play. Really, the people that did a good job were the defense. He tackles inside. It was a draw play. He shut it all off, and it bounced it all the way out to the outside. <laughs> That's all right, Dexter. It's great to have enthusiasm. In the middle of the line now, the two guards, they're fighting those two defensive tackles. But, see, they wanted to go inside there. They couldn't. So it's forced back outside, and there's Dexter Manley maintaining the discipline of his responsibility and makes the play. Two-minute warning, 10-3, Redskins. My brother thinks... Two minutes remaining, first half, 10-3, Washington. They went ahead on the Williams to Bryant, 15-yard toss. And the Hawks. Joe Bugle, the offensive line coach, maybe one of the finer, if not the best offensive line coach in football, just went through with his board and solved a couple problems they were having. First and 10, Lions. Lomas Brown back in the lineup. Second down, not first and ten. And now it'll be third and ten. Washington Redskins do have an emphasis on the run. And when they run for 40 or more times, they're 27 and 0. 25 and 2 when they rush for over 30 times and 5 and 19 when they're under 30. Well, so far today, 11, 13, 14, 15 rushes. They're going to run the ball yards. upward to 40 times. They have every time they played the Lions. And really, that's even a better percentage that exists through the league. In the last four years, I've studied that, and it's happened 425 times. And at the winners win. I mean, let's put it this way 71% of the time. Okay. 
third and 11. Chuck Long is 10 of 13 for 93 yards. The Lions are two of five on third down conversions. Got some pressure. Lobs it to Manley. And Manley is tackled from behind at the 24. Good job of maintaining poise under pressure. Chuck Long. I've seen some guys with experience would panic in that situation. That will, however, bring on Jim Arnold, who had a sensational day last week. 46-6 average. And in the fourth quarter, when the game was on the line, he had back-to-back -back punts of 53 and 58 yards against the Dallas Cowboys. Timeout has been called by the Redskins with 96 seconds to go first half. Six to go in the first half. 10-3 Redskins, and they'll have another chance now as Eric Yarber, who's had problems with punt returns. He's back at the 23. Eric Sanders is the punt snapper. And Jim Arnold back at the 10. Delay of game. About four flags down. I think that's delay again. You can have delay Ball again. Start. Nope. 98, five yards. You can't have a delay again there coming out of a timeout. <laughs> Hard to. Though it's happened, I'm sure. So that costs him five. There's Yarber, 6.7 per return. Punt. Plenty high. Yarber at the 36. Oh! oh. oh. Woo. <laughs> Gets it to the 38. A 45 yard punt and two on the return. That was James Jones, the fullback, starting fullback, that made that good hit. Excellent coverage by a starting fullback. Good high punt. Really got it up in the air. He gets it. Good concentration in the middle of your screen. James Jones, number 30, comes in. Watch him get his pads down. Then he's finished off right there by Paul Butcher, number 96. 125 to go in the half. Williams in place of Jay Schrader, 3 of 5 for 46 in the touchdown. Bryant in the flat has the ball, and nobody around him. the 46-yard line where Bruce McNorton makes the tackle. And the Redskins will go without the huddle. Out of timeouts. Clark wide right. Monk to the left. And Williams looks short. Catches Clint Didier. And that's a first down at the 47-yard line. Bruce McNorton makes the tackle, but the clock keeps running. to throw one away here fairly quickly. Into a flat for Kelvin Bryant. He'll try and get out of bounds and does. That stops the clock with 36 seconds to go in the half. The Lions might have to tighten up this prevent defense against these guys because they'll get it down in there in field goal range. That's the fault with, of the prevent Time type out. defense. Washington, that's their fourth. That's Ed Simmons, number 76, is down. He is starting in place of Joe Bostic at left guard. Russ Grimm is out with an injury. Jeff Bostic, rather. Now, what's the circumstance here with their fourth timeout? And it is obviously called because of an injury. Well, I know this. This guy's had a knee problem in the past. But then he started a couple games at offensive right tackle when Mark May was out with and now he's been playing left guard. Actually, it's his left first start at left guard. Here he is in the left center of your screen, number 76. See, he's getting good leverage right there. Right there, his right knee buckled underneath him. He's definitely got a knee injury. How serious only time will tell, but there's good trainers at the Washington Redskins. That's trainer Bubba Tyler right there with a red sweater working on him with the glasses on. 
291 pound average for the new hogs jacoby simmons mckenzie thielman and may Derek brills who was one of four replacement players for the redskins might take simmons place or they could go to, to uh, bostic and i think it is going to be bostic who's in the lineup bostic is the more experienced because he was the original starting center in the original hog line now he's a midget compared to the rest of these guys at 6'2", 260. Joe Bostic, just behind Doug Williams. Your mention of the trainer Bubba Tire reminds me of what happened at the training uh, facility on Friday when Bubba's Barbecue from Frisco, North Carolina. <laughs> Wasn't that something? They bring up 400 pounds of ribs, ribs and barbecue them right. <laughs> feed the Redskin, feed the hogs. Yeah, we had a few too. They're pretty good, huh? Feed the hogs. Yeah. What nice people they were. Tampa Bay leading Minnesota 7-3 in the second quarter. And Houston and Pittsburgh are at the half tied at three. Now keep in mind that was the fourth time out because of the injury. And Joe Gibbs is talking it over now with the headlinesman. And it's called an official's timeout. at half, Brent and Herb with scores and highlights. At any rate, 35 seconds to go, and Williams back. Escapes the rush, goes deep in the end zone. Caught, touchdown! Woo! Gary Clark! Receiving end of the Doug Williams throw. Good pressure on him. He gets back there. He's back now. See the stunt. The pressure coming to the right. Eric Williams, 76, pushes him up inside the pocket. Now watch to the right side of the screen. He turns all the way around, and there you have James Griffin, who is a safety, not a corner type one on one defender. And is this guy excited? He ought to be. And here come a series of high fives. Gary Clark. I watched him play hunch basketball yesterday after practice. Everyone's going home, and he's in the little basketball gym playing basketball. He says, don't you ever get tired? Says, no, coach. He says, I'm just a gym rat. <laughs> 42 on the catch. And Williams has hit 24 and 84 for touchdowns in the final six minutes of the first half. doesn't help Jay Schrader's enthusiasm, I'm sure. Glad to see the team on top. But the Redskins have erupted and have a 14-point lead. Script kick. Oh, Big Danny Salamua, number 97. Pretty good run. <laughs> He has that great grace. He really does. Big Samoan athlete. Flag is down. This guy is graceful. Watch him run here, Vern. Looks like a fullback. He weighs 285 to 90 pounds. Look at him. He stucks it. He's got it under his right arm. Looks like a running back. Oh, he's going to protect it. Now watch his move. Oh, super. <laughs> Boom. The ground shook when he hit it. <laughs> Danny, you are all right. They say he's a good dancer, too. <laughs> Williams 7 of 9 for 107 yards since replacing Jay Schrader at the six and a half minute mark. Kicking team was offside. They declined a penalty and take the ball right here. First down. 23 seconds, Burn. Doesn't seem that long ago that the Lions were kicking a field goal for the lead. Yeah. Simmons has a sprained right knee and will not be back in the lineup. And he really sprained it. 
rookie from Eastern Washington. Three-man rush by the Redskins. Intercept. Oh. <laughs> Lost my concentration for a second. And James Jones makes the grab. Nice little screen pass against his own prevent type defense. That's the best way to approach it. Short stuff in the middle of it. Boy, that's why it's so unusual to get the big one against the prevent defense. 61 yards and four plays in less than a minute. What happened on that touchdown, though, is a defensive safety. James Griffin, who's not used to covering one-on-one -on -one situations, found himself isolated by good offensive formation execution on a fine wide receiver. That, you know, that's tough. 15 seconds to go in the half. 17-3, Redskins lead it. Long. Butch Wolfolk makes the grab at the 38-yard line. And now with eight seconds to go. This is when you wish he hadn't had to call those timeouts earlier in the ballgame. Right. That is their last. We've got a dynamite college football doubleheader for you next Saturday. We'll tip it off with Notre Dame against Penn State live at 12 o'clock Eastern time. Dick and I will be in State College for that game. And then the one everybody in the country has been waiting for, Oklahoma against Nebraska in Lincoln, live at 3.30 Eastern time. Sooners won yesterday while Nebraska was idle. That might be a little edge for Nebraska. They're really freshen up. Plus, you can spend so much more time in the preparation of your game plan technically as coaches. Mm -hmm. And secondly, you can freshen your players up. You can give them some days off that you couldn't give them if you were playing a football game. And freshness at the end of the season creates quickness. And if you're a little quicker than you would have been, that's a real edge. There's Jerry Rome, the quarterback coach. I don't know what he can teach Doug Williams after oh, what we've seen here in the first half. Jerry Rome is one of the better uh, quarterback coaches in the league. Could be the final play of the half. They try and get out of bounds. A flag is down in the offensive backfield. And Dexter Manley is claiming that he was held. <laughs> Detroit. I'm not sure who they call that holding on him. Offensive holding number 73. 10 yards. Harvey Salem. Salem. Mm -hmm. Well, he has nothing to do with Dexter Manley. Dexter Manley is just becoming a statesman for the whole front up there. <laughs> That's right. He's in Washington, D.C. He might as well be a statesman, <laughs> right? There's Manley. He and is a character. Charles Mann. Take a look at Harvey Salem. Be on the left side of your screen against Charles Mann. Charles Mann, number 71, work, beat him on an inside move. Now he's just grabbing on and hanging on to prevent him from getting to the quarterback. It's better to do that than let him get there clean. Final play of the half coming up. That'll be bounced around incomplete. Oh, well, it was picked off. It sure was. Gerald Green's got it. Remember this, he's a great punt returner. He can score. His second interception of the first half. A 59-yard return. That's the end of the first half. With our score, the Redskins 17 and the Detroit Lions 3. is out and this quarterback is in doug williams lighting up the scoreboard for the redskins he's completed seven of nine for 102 yards and two touchdowns this one 42 yards to gary clark and the skins take a 17-3 lead on detroit irv cross your thoughts about the change it's a shocker you know joe gibbs said he would not take schrader out of the game no matter what of course he came into this game only completing 40 percent of his passes played fairly well in the first half but he was still yanked so I guess Doug Williams is going to be the starter from now on, huh? The St. Louis Cardinals erupted for two touchdowns in the last six and a half minutes to break the 3-3 tie. They lead by a 14-point margin with half the game to go. Vern Lundquist along with Dick Vermeil. And Dick, unquestionably, the story of the first half was Joe Gibbs' decision to pull Jay Schrader and put in Doug Williams. And Schrader really hadn't been playing poorly. They just hadn't put any points on the board. And he really hadn't missed the open receiver, per se. But Doug has come in and hit the two touchdown passes for, in big plays and really have provided some spark. 
Well, the decision obviously justified if you look at the statistics. Williams, 7 of 9 for 107, and he hit two touchdowns. The first came on a pass to Kelvin Bryant. Kelvin Bryant came out of the backfield to the left side of the screen, number 24, working on James Harris, a safety up playing in a nickel coverage. He beat him badly to the inside, everybody else playing man-to-man, -man, no one to recover to make the tackle. Touchdown. And with less than a half minute to go in the first half, Williams scrambled out of trouble and found Gary Clark deep. He does a real good job avoiding the rush to the right, steps up in the pocket, maintains concentration downfield, and here Gary Clark, 84, got isolated on a free safety, number 34, James Griffin. It really, Griffin should have intercepted that ball. There was one point just prior to that touchdown pass that was slightly confusing, and we want to clarify that circumstance. The Redskins called their fourth time out of the half when Ed Simmons, the guard, went down with a knee injury. The rules state that you can take an extra timeout for an injury if the player so injured does leave the game, and that was the circumstance. From that point on, if you take a fifth penalty, a fifth timeout, that's when penalties occur. So if you were confused as to why the Redskins were allowed the fourth timeout, we hope we've straightened it out for you and for us. That's it for the first half. CBS Sports coverage of NFL football will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Doug Williams, the star of the first half, his second start, or rather his uh, third appearance of the year, came on in relief of Jay Schrader after a Schrader injury in the opener against Philadelphia, started against Atlanta, and in this game, no injury to Schrader. He replaced him. Joe Gibbs made that decision in the second quarter, and the Redskins have a rather overwhelming advantage when they lead at the half. 53-4. Since 1982. That's not saying that Detroit can't come back, but they're going to have to beat the odds. Steve Cox will kick off and does so. It bounces at the 30 and taken by a lineman again. Jerry Ball. SMU. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are pretty mobile. Pretty good field position at the 39 yeah. yard line. No. Tackle return yards. <laughs> That's right. Salamu and Ball, the star of the special teams. 296 pounds. Did a pretty good job. No one wanted to hit him, though. <laughs> Jerry Ball, before he went to SMU, was a high school fullback, so that wasn't was it. A... Hey, I'm glad you do your research here, Coach. <laughs> Sometimes I get a little help. <laughs> First down, quick count. And off James Jones gets it. Detroit had an impressive start to the game, but at the last four possessions, things have gone south. They came out early in the first quarter throwing the play action pass, the out pattern backside, the one-on-one -on -one situation to Chadwick. What they did, what the Redskins did, is go up and play bump and run on him and not give him that free room to run. That's They had the one pass interference call, but they have stopped using the pattern. Chuck Long pitches back. The toss goes to Jones. He's got some room. He can run. Oh, arm and, oh boy, if he hadn't stumbled. He had a downfield block from Manley on Daryl Green. He might have gone for a bundle. This guy, you have to keep putting the ball in this man's hand as a runner and as a receiver, and in this case, a runner. They toss him the ball to the right of your screen. He toss it. He gets a good block. Now, watch the ability to cut back, make people miss. Watch the fluid movement of the big man. 230 pounds, good stiff arm, and then he trips himself right there. But if you give him the ball 33 times some way in the game, he's going to score a touchdown because that's his career average. Here's Carl Bernard at the middle. He replaced an injured Gary James in the first quarter. And now James Jones just went out of the game and Gary Ellerson came in. This guy's running with good intensity, with a little confidence. And what you worry about with a young back in there is not so much the running ability. It's picking up the uh, the dogs, the, the safety blitzes, and the audibles. You really worry about if he'll do that correct. Gary James, just to bring you up to speed, was uh, the victim of a bruised shoulder. He is still in the locker room. They're checking on the injury. First down now, Detroit. Quick count. Bernard again. Spins off of one. Good Anthony job Arms. of running. Alvin Walton at the 27-yard line. Carl was a good football player in college, but he had a problem staying healthy. He had an injured plague year, and therefore he signs as a free agent, not a drafted football player. But he ends up right now running like a, you know, an impressive back. James Jones back in the lineup. Daryl Rogers is gone for the sweater in the second half as the shadows begin to engulf RFK. Second and six. Blitz coming. And they jam things up on the ground. That'll bring up a third and five. Alvin Walton made the tackle, number 40. See, now they're getting back into that third down situation, which 
Darrell was telling us yesterday, we don't do a good job in third down. We know we're getting better. He said, we, we've thought about going to four wide receivers in third down, but that's much more difficult for a quarterback, and we don't want to throw too much at Chuck Brown too soon, and then, therefore, he would not be as effective. So we stay with three receivers in the back rather than four receivers, hoping that he can understand that type of attack. Facing a third and five right now. They're 40% on third downs today. Blitz out of the shotgun. That's short of the first down. Manley does get to the 24-yard line. But that will bring on it. They really came after him, put the pressure on him. Of course, everyone's isolated one-on-one, -on -one, but not even close to the first down with a short dump off. Shotgun formation. Now, note all defense. Here comes Walton right up the middle. He's picked up nicely by James Jones. There's the ball put out to the right. Good tight coverage. Man-to-man, Daryl Green rustles him down. Here's Manley in the middle of your screen, just running the slot out pattern. See, not enough for the first down. He's got to drive down there a little bit further if he's going to catch that and make the first down against man-to-man -man coverage. Eddie Murray is one of two today. That's from 41 yards, and it's good. And the Lions double their point output for the day. It's now 17 to 6 with 11:18 to go, third quarter. Chatting with Daryl Rogers last night, reminding him that the Lions are 0 for 13 in their last 13 visits here, and he said, "Yeah, but I'm only 0 for 1." <laughs> Murray just kicked a field goal. The Lions are now down 17 to 6, and Keith Griffin waits for it. Got it up in the air real good. But short at the 14. Ooh. Good field position. You get the ball out to start on the other side of that 30 yard line. The return team has done a good job, Burn. Lions haven't won over Washington since 1965. Remember some of the things that happened back then? LBJ was our president. Yeah. I know you remember that. No satisfaction. I, I knew you know that. that. I could dance to that. The sound of music. Now I remember, I remember that. that too. And the Dodgers beat the Twins in the World Series. I don't remember that. And Joe Don Looney scored the winning touchdown as the Lions beat the Redskins 14 to 10. That's the last time they won. First and 10, Washington with a 17 to 6 lead. Timmy Smith is in at fullback. Rogers is out with a strained groin muscle. And Smith gets the carry. His third of the game for 10 yards. St. Louis has come from behind now and leads the Rams and Miami over Indianapolis at the half. Kansas City over the Jets in a low scoring game. You know, Timmy hasn't played very much coming into the ball game, only carrying the ball seven times, but he was averaging better than seven yards a carry. Our score is 17 to 6. Washington. Smith again. With that big offensive line coming off the ball, with the size of it and the structure of how they block people, it can make an average back look like a better back. What caused the trend, Dick, to go for the 300-pound lineman? That, that's not new, but relatively recent. Well, first off, remember, bigger people normally have longer arms, mm -hmm. and that helps you in pass protection. And then bigger people provide more power at the point of attack for blocking the big defensive lineman. That's the first down. Good job. Tim Smith to the 46. Shelton Robinson, number 51, with a tackle. Focus your attention on the fullback, number 29. It'll appear from the left side of your screen. Now, it's a kick out block there by Didier. Now, here's the fullback on the lead block right there, right on the linebacker. He doesn't get him down, but he ricochets off, and Sheldon Robinson does a nice job of coming off that fullback lead block and getting in on the plate. But it is a first down. Runs and passes for the Redskins just about even, 19 to 18 now. But now they can concentrate on the ground game. They can do what they do best. Well, maybe, maybe they'll let Williams and well, Clark the, hook up again. The philosophy of the hitch pass is a running play. Right. They just go out there and throw for four or five yards. It's a very, probably a 90% complete type pattern, and it's easier than running. Penalty, holding. Offensive holding on the offense, 10 yards. He held 93. We don't know who did it, but he held 93, which is Jerry Ball. You can see when they run the ball, they win. 40-plus rushes, 27 wins. 30-plus rushes, 25 wins, two losses. The winners in the league last year, there were 224 people that won. If you take all the wins okay. of all the wicked, 
they averaged running 36 times. The guys that lost 224 games last year, all the teams that lost each weekend, ran the ball 26 times a game. So <laughs> the Redskins are aware of that. After the penalty, it's first down and 20. Kelvin Bryant this time. You know, Detroit's really swarming on the ball pretty good. You notice a, a lot of blue jerseys coming in that ball carrier. There's not a lot of one-on-one -on -one tackles being made. That'll put up uh, a passing circumstance now. Second down and 18 from the 38. Now, they won't try to get 18 yards unless they catch it in front and run for 18. They'll try to throw the 9 or 10 and get half of it back. Clark and Monk both come to the near side. Monk in motion, shadowed by Chris Sheffield, and Williams with the screen pass to Kelvin Bryant. He's good in these situations. You see him make this go deep and miss. You see now they got half of it back, Vern. Now the percentages of making the first down are much better. Mm -hmm. Follow the big offensive lineman now. As the quarterback goes back, you'll see them setting inside. Now watch him release for the screen. Getting out there, there's Bostic 53 getting a peel back block on Salamina 97. Now here he comes. Roaring upfield for a nice 9, 10-yard game. Watch Salamua, number 97, on the nose. This is a tough way to make a living, ladies and gentlemen. He's powering it back in, and now he's coming back in to get in the run. Boom, he gets hit again. Now he's being held. <laughs> right. Makes you want to carry the football. Third and nine. Williams, left side, wide open. All right, Monk, first down, 32. Chris Sheffield, Chris Sheffield playing right corner, number 28, in place of Bruce McNaught, number 29. For some reason, Chris Sheffield just showed up there a week ago. Good drop back pass. He plants. Now he's going to work back over to the right of the screen. There's out. Good cushion being given by Chris Sheffield, number 28. And oh, Art Monk. Hey, tuck that ball under your arm. That's it, Art. Chris Sheffield just showed up in Detroit a week ago. So from the second and 18. The Redskins convert first down at the 32. Don Warren starts in motion. Timmy Smith gets the handoff and is knocked down at the 30-yard line. That is the sixth carry for Smith for 19 yards. Midway through the third period, a 17-6 Washington lead. Redskins now about to run their eighth play, and they've already run 420 off the clock. Defensive coordinator Wayne Fonts. Shelton Robinson to his side. Williams. Monk. For the 24. Again, doing a good job of only getting part of the yards he needs to make the first down. Not getting greedy. Positive gain ball control. This big guy, you know, you think because he's not a real mobile guy because of the knee injury in the past that he gets sacked a lot. But he really doesn't. He has great poise in the pocket, great command, and he just sits in there strong. Tough to sack this guy. He only was only sacked 65 times in 67 games coming into this season. Third and short, Williams 10 of 12 for 142 yards. Ricky Sanders in motion, number 83. Overthrown, incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Sanders, the intended receiver, and that'll bring on Ali Hajashik. You had an interesting point to make, though, Dick, about the relative significance of offensive third down conversions compared to the importance of defending on third down. Well, first off, if you're a real good offensive football team, you third down conversion isn't as important because you do a better job on first and second down. Defensively, it is critical. After the kick, I'll tell you another thing I learned about that. Okay. To sheet, 41 yards. Got it, he got it. He has new life in, new, in Washington, D.C. 5.37 to go, third quarter. It's a 20 to 6 Washington lead. Appetizer will be Penn State and Notre Dame. Oh. Doubleheader next week. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, I wonder, did he touch it? It is a touchback. Yeah. Which well folks having a bad day back there. 
That is the matter of impetus. Notre Dame Penn State tips it off next Saturday. College football on CBS. That game at 12 o'clock Eastern and then Oklahoma, Nebraska. Live at 3.30. Ali Hajishik. He has new life here in Washington, D.C. He says, Coach, the atmosphere for a kicker here is much more conducive to kicking well because there's not a lot of pressure put on you by the coaches. And if you miss one, they know that's part of the game. Chuck Long, not known for his scrambling. He was laughing last night about a comparison between Randall Cunningham <laughs> and himself. Long gets a first down, and we're going to go to New York to check on other things going on. Here's Brent Lusberger. Vern, uh, entertaining game in St. Louis. The Rams back to within three. Block punt. Nolan Cromwell gets a piece of it. Bouncing ball finally recovered by Jerry Gray in the end zone, and it's 24-21. Cardinals lead, but it's down to three. Back to Vern. Our score, 20-6. And doing a James good job Jones of, up the middle. Doing a real good job of getting the cutback. That means the offensive linemen are sealing the defense backside pursuit so they can't get to the point of attack. Now we have official word from the Detroit bench that Gary James will not be back in this ballgame. Bruce Shoulder. And George Rogers is also out for the Redskins, along with Ed Simmons. Mark Lewis was ejected for Detroit in the first half. Jones gets the first down. Yeah, I'd like to see Detroit give the ball to this big guy. He's only carried the ball 41 times on the season. You know, of course, he wasn't playing during the strike, but that's not enough time for a guy of his caliber the, to earn his paycheck. The problem they've had, of course, Dick, is that they fell behind 24 nothing back-to-back weeks against Denver and Green Bay. And boy, then you're in your two-minute offense in the first quarter. But they have done a good job of coming back like they did against Green Bay. Right. Jones has had a good day today. And the audible now from Chuck Long. Around the corner and out of bounds. James Jones is knocked out by Mill Kaufman. I thought Chuck was going to audible to a deep pattern because both corners from the Washington Redskins were lined up in a bump and run position. I thought he was going to go after him deep. They've got to get the ball in Pete Manley's hands if they're going to score some points here. Sellout crowd at RFK Stadium and a good ball game thus far. Hometown fans have enjoyed it as the Redskins lead at 20 to 6. The lead story, Doug Williams replaced Jay Schrader at quarterback with six and a half to go in the second quarter, and he's thrown two touchdown passes. 3.39 to go third quarter, and a second down and seven for the Detroit Lions. Long, that kind of wobbled. Flag is down. They may get Darrell Green for pushing off. That's what I was talking about, Bird. Right there, a minute ago, I thought they were going to go deep with him up playing bump and run, but that Daryl Green can really run. Or are they going to get Manley for shoving off? They might have got it on... No. Oh, they got it on Daryl. I don't think he's realized it yet. Well, you know, when you start up bump and run and, and turn Number and run... Number 28 defense holding five yards in the previous spot, and that's a first down. Daryl can't figure that out. But it's hard to avoid contact when you start right up on the nose of a guy. Then you're going to turn and run with him. This guy has not had the typical year in terms of caliber of play that uh, he has conditioned everybody to expect in the Pro Bowl caliber. He had ankle problems in the offseason, reported to training camp in not real good condition, and has been slow in getting going. But he told me in the locker room the other day that the real Daryl Green is suiting up today. Well, he's had two interceptions already today. First and ten, Lions. They trail 20 to 6. That's an illegal formation. Chadwick spins out of a tackle and has a first down at the 30. Why yeah. illegal? Yeah, the running back who was lined up as a wide receiver, number 25, out on the line of scrimmage, was on the line of scrimmage, and making that... the tight end an illegal receiver, and the tight end released. The only play would have been uh, legal is if the tight end hadn't gone off, and the guy didn't call it. Eight men on the line, right? He, yes, he, well, it's all right to have eight as long as the one guy's not covered. Right, okay. At the top of the screen, you can see what I was talking about. Here's T Chadwick coming underneath in a delay move. Detroit runs a lot of these delay-type patterns. First and 10, Detroit at the 30. Chadwick with four catches for that. Bernard was up on the line again. They're going deep to Carl Bernard. Walton back there. And the pass incomplete. I think that time he was lined up legally, though. He was far enough off. The last time he was definitely illegal. 
Chuck Long has the nicest quick delivery. The only other guy I see playing today that has that kind of just snap throw is Marino. Now, I'm not going to say he's going to be another Marino. You never know. But he sure snaps the ball off. How do you define a quick release? Maybe here later in the game we can show it, get a good ISO on him. It just doesn't take him very long to take the ball from his right hand and get it into the air. Second and ten. Twenty to six. Coming what's coming. And boy, did that one get sniffed out. Yeah. Extra Manley makes the tackle. Help from Neil Okowitz. They brought the safeties too. They brought everybody but the kitchen sink that time. Dexter Manley made the play. He's down in the corner of the screen. Here he is, number 72, coming inside out. He goes underneath people, underneath, and gets the play. The reason he was turned a little bit freer in there is people were picking up safeties inside him, so they couldn't get any help. Third and 12, 2.10 to go, third quarter. 14-point Redskin lead. Four-man rush, and a wide-open Pete Manley almost dropped it. But he hangs on, first and goal, Lions inside the five. The key to that was good protection. I don't know where Manley came from, but the key to that was excellent protection. And if gradually the coverage broke down. Here's Pete Manley in the slot. It's a crossing pattern. Those patterns take a long time. It's zone. They're not covering with him man-to-man, -man, see? And Redskins are not a big zone team. That's a changeup. Nobody dropping back in that zone. He gets a block downfield. First down, goal to go. Watch Take the release. This. Watch this release how long. Now, he's got the ball, got the ball, got that. Now, watch it. Watch him throw. Boom. There it goes. That is, we'll get a better angle as the game goes on, but that shows how quickly he can get rid of the football. First and goal, Lions from the two. They trail by 14. Bernard, touchdown, oh. Detroit. And did he do a nice job of dipping inside and bouncing outside? That constricts the defense. He threw them all inside, then he bounced outside. He also got a great block from number 74, Joe Malinichik. Great big guy, was 300 pounds. He's down about 280, but he got a good block from him. And he becomes the first player other than Gary James to score on the ground this year for Detroit. Follow number 74 to the right center of your screen. He's pulling out there and see him get the block right there. Ooh, he gets a nice devastating block on number 40, Alvin Walton, and that allows him to walk in there. Good job, Joe. One fifty-one to go, third quarter, 20 to 13. Eddie Murray getting ready to kick off as the Lions have scored on both of their possessions of the third quarter, a Murray field goal, and now the Carl Bernard touchdown to shave the lead to 20-13. 1.51 to go third quarter. That was Carl's first touchdown in his young career. He's going to save that football. That's another short kick taken at the 17. That's Branch. You better hit him. <laughs> He's a well-built son of a gun, real strong, determined football player. Joe Gibbs replaced Jay Schrader with Doug Williams with six and a half left to go in the first half. Williams throws two quick touchdowns. The Lions fall behind 17 to three. It looked like Washington may just go from here to here, but it didn't happen. But what happened, the Detroit Lions have come out in the second half, not allowing that negative situation in the second quarter, the falling behind by 14 points to affect them mentally. And I really think that 14-point cushion has allowed the Redskins to relax a little bit, and they're having a hard time getting going again. Well, it's been an impressive third quarter for Detroit. And now Washington has the ball with Doug Williams in at quarterback. And he has to call a timeout to beat the 30-second clock. The clock is still running. They haven't stopped it. And now they do with 1.31 to go. And so while they discuss that, we'll take our own timeout. 142 to go third quarter. Redskins have the ball first and 10 at their own 37-yard line. Officially, they'll call it the 36. Reverse. Art Monk gets it and goes left. Gets a good block from Don Warren, and Monk is spilled as he gets out to the 44-yard line by Mike Kofer. Here we go, man in motion coming here. Now he fakes it now, man in motion. Art Monk had 
gone in motion, then turned around, reverse, pivoted, and came back down in the reverse. And Keith Ferguson and, and Kofer, number 55, make the play. Didn't fool everybody, but they did make a nice game. Monk goes wide to the left side. 2013. One minute, five seconds to go, third quarter. Timmy Smith caught short of the first down at the 45. It'll be third and one. There was another one of those wham blocks that was played real well by Jerry Ball, number 95. The, the back in the backfield went in and tried to block him from the blind side, and he read it coming and stuffed it. Now let's see what the Redskins come up with. This is really not true short yardage. This is a little, yeah, they're not going to approach it as short yardage. See, this is a third and long two. Darrell Rogers looks on. Looks like a running play to me. Redskins are 50% on third down conversions. They will run it, and they will not get the first down. Kelvin Bryant carries the ball, and he is stuffed. Didn't have a chance. Danny Salamua was right there at the point of attack. Salamua right to the right of your screen, number 97. Right on the center's nose. Now, here he is. See, he's working on the center. Boom, and he worked, fought back. Good job of playing nose car. Good job. That was Curtis Green making good penetration. So the Lions have hung in there. They trail by only seven. That's the end of the third quarter with our score, 2013. We now pause for a word from your local station. First, Steve Cox back to punt. Ooh. And the rush was on. Pete Manley runs up under it. Spins out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Pete Manley did a nice job of attacking that ball and fielding it. He does not want to allow a punted ball to drop in front of him. He told us that last night. He says, it's my obligation to catch every punt, even if I have to fair catch. But I don't want it rolling on the ground and losing 15, 20 yards. Manley had a 61-yard punt return against the Cowboys last week. And how big was that defensive possession for the Lions in the last series? Well, when you stop and think they scored with a field goal and a touchdown, and uh, now they, they the first series of defense, I mean, they shut them down right there. They've gained some momentum. 20 to 13 to score. Chuck Long for the day is 16 of 21 for 163 yards. And off to Carl Bernard going left and cutting back to the right and finds some room out to the 30-yard line. Did a nice job of cutting back. They were stringing it out over to the right side, and as he was moving to his left, the defensive right, he found a little cutback lane. I'm impressed with this guy. Here comes Kevin Glover, 53. Harvey Salem, number 73. They're blocking on Daryl Grant and Dexter Manley. He finds that little cutback lane. Good vision. I'm impressed with this young man. He's having a terrific day. In place of Gary James, he started the season by fumbling two kickoffs against the Raiders in week two and kind of got in the doghouse. He's getting out of it today. That pass incomplete as Bernard slipped trying to make his cut. You know what happened? That's a read pattern by the running back. It's what they call a choice. He comes out and he has the choice to run the route on the defender as he reads it. And the quarterback reads it together. Evidently, the quarterback read it going to the out and Bernard read it to the stop. And you could see Long signaling that yeah, yeah. after the pass went incomplete. Quarterbacks always do that. <laughs> Coming up next in our doubleheader weekend, some of you see the Giants in Philly, others see Green Bay and Seattle. Third down. strong comeback pattern by Chadwick and that's a first down at the 46 yard line and again they push Barry Wilburn deep and then come back on him and this is another example of being able to snap throw a football under pressure Chadwick down there at one on one running the out pattern Barry Wilburn 45 up in the bump and run position now it's tough to run the inside move but you give him a little stick now now he comes back on the out see a little reverse pivot out first down well executed play good timing good timing but watch Chuck Long throw this ball now under pressure now watch his arm now watch this boom just that doesn't take very much time for him to get rid of it Carl Bernard on first down he's out to the 40 nine yard line 20 to 13 with 13 20 remaining in the ball game boy is this guy impressive he is he is really impressive daryl rogers has a gym in this guy he really does and i think he realizes that oh yeah he does he really does i hope the heck they give him enough time to go ahead and develop the whole program around him most coaches don't get enough time when you lose got his first win as a starting quarterback last week and celebrated by buying a pair of new boots. Yeah, they were impressive boots. They were Water looking snake at mine. Water boots. snake Yeah, boots. no, he won the boot battle. Yeah. I like his better than yours. Yeah. 
Gears had some wear and tear on the game. Second down and nine. Jones behind the line. Good job. On and drop. Boy, good determination. Bonnie Coleman. And another third down. Bonnie Coleman, experienced outside linebacker to the right corner of your screen. Concentrate on him. They try to block him. He goes underneath the block. Gets flung, but look how tough it is to bring this big guy down. Great body balance and power all combined into one human being. Good fullback. Lions are four of nine on third down conversions. They face third and long again now. Third and eight. And Butch Wolfolk comes into the lineup. No shotgun. Four-man rush. Long deep, man wide open. Mark Nichols has it. And a first down at the 27-yard line. Boy, is Dexter Manley upset. A 24-yard gain, and Long looks back at Dexter Manley. He was really upset. Evidently, he felt he got held. He had good heat on him. Here's Mark Nichols, number 86, isolated on number 41, Timmy Morrison, turning him loose. It's his own defense again. And he turned around in that zone, did a good job. Now, again, the Redskins changing up a little bit, going to the zone. Manley to the right side of the screen, number 72, Lomas Brown, 75. See that right arm? He's got him right on by the seven number. <laughs> Hold him there, and he doesn't like that. First down, Gary Ellison in the lineup. Long looks back to his right, and a great pass and a fine route run by Pete Mads. Gary Lee is Gary the Gary Lee, the receiver. rookie wide receiver. That's only a second catch on the year. Here he is on Barry Wilburn, who's intercepted five passes. Off. Now watch him give him a good little stick move right there. Got him turned. Wilburn makes a good pivot, but he's coming back to the war quarterback. And boy, if you're moving back away from that defender, it's tough to get to the ball. Detroit Lions have scored on their first two possessions of the half. Field goal, touchdown. I really think the Redskins have lost momentum at halftime. First and ten, Detroit with a chance to tie. with protection, the same kind of a route. Intercepted, oh. Barry Wilburn. That's his sixth of the year in as many games. And he is down at the 13-yard line. Went to the well too many times. Look at Chuck. They were trying to go to Gary Lee on Wilburn right here in the middle of your screen. Now he comes down, he gives him a little roll move back to the inside on an in pattern. He throws it high and behind him. Normally, when you throw high and behind a guy, there's a defender. And there was Barry Wilburn making the play. Wilburn with his sixth interception of the season. Reports the Detroit Lion attempt for the tie game with his sixth interception of 1987. Chuck Long now three interceptions in the ball game. Doug Williams in relief of Jay Schrader, two touchdowns, but most of his effectiveness was in the first half. And I want to go back with this 20 to 13 lead to something Joe Gibbs told you and me on Friday. He feels this is a pivotal game for his ball club to find out what kind of a team, Dick, they're really going to be. He wants to know if they're going to be the kind of team that plays well one week and poorly the next week, or they're going to play well every week. He thinks they have the ability to play well every week, and they played well in the first half, but they've sagged in the second. Don't know that he's going to be real happy with what he's seen so far, and we've got 10-59 remaining in the ball game. It's obvious to me, though, that the, the win last week over the Cowboys has given the Lions the confidence that they can play, you know, and people were belittling them. The owner was talking to them and calling them lousy and all that stuff, and, and Darrell was upset with them, too, but he didn't quit on them. And they are playing good football. Give them credit. Second down now and 10 from the 15-yard line. Doug Williams, 10 of 14. Ferguson coming on the rush in the grasp, I believe, is the call from Ben Bright. And Ferguson got there. Keith Ferguson. Keith Ferguson was the most valuable defensive player last year. Here he is, number 77 to the left side of your screen. Here he is. He's being doubled up right there by Warren. Now he works back underneath. Just keeps coming because the defense took the pattern away downfield. That, as George Allen would say, is a coverage sack. That is the first sack on Doug Williams, the second sack of Redskin quarterbacks today. They have only allowed 11, second best in the NFL. Second to Miami. Miami with nine. Third and 
and 16. Stunts by the defensive line. And Coker put a hit on. A diving grab, and it's incomplete. Great stunt by Michael Coker coming around to the inside. We call that a Lex stunt. To the left side of the screen, he cross-charged with the defensive tackle. To the right side of your screen, far outside is number 55 in blue. See him cross-charge. Now they zone picked it up. They switched men, but he is so quick being a linebacker first, a down lineman second, that he beat the, the zone pickup. Watch this contact now made. Here he is. He slides over there. Wham! He really got put down by Michael Cooper. Good movement. It was Ricky Smith who missed on the driving try for the interception. Now Cox is back and gets it out. It's Lousy not a great punt. punt. Manley at the 48. Down at the 44. Good field position. It's a short field. 39-yard punt for Steve Cox. Four on the return, and Chuck Long gets another chance. 10-09 remaining in our game and the Redskins clinging to a seven-point lead. Chuck Long and the Lions come to the line. Redskins have 58 consecutive game streak with at least one sack, but none so far today. And James Jones gets the first down carry to the 42. Just to amplify on that, they had one sack in the first half that was negated by a penalty, and a lot of credit should go to this offensive line of the Lions, Dave. I'll tell you, the two offensive guards that Daryl Rogers was concerned if they would match up against Daryl Gratt and Dave Bunce, that is Scott Barrows, number 61, and Kevin Glover, 53, they, they're doing a good job in there. They're earning their paychecks today blocking those great big guys. Steve Mott is the center. And Vito Cab, the tight end. Play fake. Long back. Throws it behind the receiver, and Carl Bernard can't hang on. It'll be third down. Get set up a little bit, Chuck. Get set up just a little bit better. Look at Daryl. He smiles at him. I'll tell you, Daryl has the patience of a saint. There are so many different philosophies in how you handle a quarterback when he makes a mistake. Sonny Jurgensen on the practice field the other day was telling me Vince Lombardi told him to be prepared to be chewed out because he's going to get after him more than any other. Other coaches won't even talk to the quarterback when he makes a mistake. They'll take him privately and say, hey, son, you made a mistake. Yeah. Third and eight in a seven-point game. Blitz. Dropping out. Long back. Incomplete. Good defense. Intended Good defense. for Mark Nichols. Good throw, good defense. That was just the fact of being where you had to be. Here, Daryl Green. Here they are, all lined up now. You'll note both safeties drop out of there, but the linebackers came from the outside, putting pressure. The ball coming down to the left corner of your screen, throwing just slightly behind him, and Daryl Green right there playing good defense like he told me he would play. He's doing a good job of analyzing, isn't he? That brings on Jim Arnold for only the second time today, and Eric Yarber waits for it at the 10-yard line. He only has three touchbacks, so he's probably going to try to pop this one up. Does it? Fair catch called. It bounces and heads down toward the goal line. Great down job. at the two-yard line. A great job of punting. A 40-yard punt and no return, and Joe Gibbs must be a little concerned with the flatness of his team right now. It's obvious to me, or at least I feel this, that the momentum that they had at the end of the second quarter get, built the confidence up a little bit at halftime to the point that they, they relaxed a little, and it didn't affect Detroit Lions negatively, and that is a real salute to the Lions. And I'll tell you this, I think he's thinking now, hey, we got to get after these guys with our good old Salon uh, hog, run at them, knock them out of there, and get first downs and eat up the clock. They don't have George Rogers in the backfield. That's a gain of a couple. Keith Griffin out near the five. Here's what the Lions, or Joe Gibbs, has done against the Lions, his offensive teams. The significant thing here are the number of rushes and then the yards. 41 rushes, 38 rushes, 46 rushes, 41 rushes, 44 rushes. You win when you can do that. Detroit is not allowing that to happen today. They've only run 24 times today. This will be the 25th. That's their number one running play, the old counter gap play. That's the number one play in their offense. And Jimmy Williams said the way we're going to stop that 
That's the left linebacker, number 59, says, Coach, we're going to go down and force him back up inside. Uh, we're going to force down inside and force him to run the ball outside. That time it turned up. 25 runs for 115 yards thus far with six... Eight, eight minutes and ten when seconds. When they run in a ball game less than 30 times, they've up won five and lost 19. That's not nearly what the record is when they get better than 30. Third and four. Williams looks left. Ricky Sanders. McNorton slipped in his coverage. And Sanders has a big first down for Washington at the 27-yard line. Just a quick hitch. This they use in place of the running play. You'll note the quarterback will take a short drop. One, two, three, pivot throw. One, two, three, pivot throw. That's it. Fired out there. And boy, with his arm, it doesn't take that ball long to get out there. It's not in the air very long. Now McNorton's attacking and trying to get him out of bounds, which he does with the help of Rafael Cherry, number 45. Ricky Sanders' second catch of the day, his 13th of the year. First and 10, Washington. 7.50 to go in the ball game. 7.51. Smith gets this hand off, and he's jammed up at the line of scrimmage by Jerry Ball, the rookie that was, nose tackle. That wasn't real good running by the running back. He turned back way too soon. He didn't get over there and challenge the defense because I really think they had the defense hooked, and he could have gotten outside. We're live at RFK Stadium in Washington where the Redskins hold on to a 20-13 lead with 7.25 to go in the ball game. They had a 17-3 lead at the half on two touchdown strikes from Doug Williams, who replaced Jay Schrader with six and a half left in the first half. That was a Joe Gibbs decision. They look back to the left, and it's incomplete. The coverage took the pattern away over to the right side where he wanted to go. He came back and threw the fade to the left side, which is really a low percentage throw. they were trying to get him to do is go on the hitch and go. Now watch him come down here, run the hitch, and then he's going to turn now, and now he's going to go. But this is really not a called pattern. That he thought he was going to scramble, and he decided to go. There was a, man, a defender between the flight of the ball and the quarterback that, that time, and he couldn't throw it. Third and eight. Flag is down. Is made by Gary Clark, but hold everything. Flag in the offensive backfield. Probably holding. It is indeed. Jacoby. They're calling on Joe Jacoby, I think. I think he's going to get called for holding uh, William Gaines. Offensive holding number 53. Oh, 53. 10 right. yards, third down. Bostic. That's Jeff Bostic, normally an offensive center playing guard. Left side of your line. There he is. He's setting inside. Now he's taking him on down. It looked like, a, I don't know, it was a takedown regardless of what it was. But you can see the pattern developing down in the zone as he throws it down in the hole. Does a nice job, but it's negated with the penalty. He's playing in place of Ed Simmons, who got his first start at guard today. Went out with an East Rain. Third Redskin penalty in the half. Third and 18. Deep left side. Monk is way downfield. Woo! A fumble on the play. And now they are saying no catch. And there's also a flag down. Said he did not have possession. That was a rifle throw. Double zone. Two safeties playing down there, Vern. And Again, James Griffin didn't get over. Fisher's roll incomplete. We can take a look at Art Mump in 81 to the left center of your screen. Coming off, works to the outside now. There he now, he goes back up underneath the zone. Timmy Morrison, 41. Now there's James Griffin coming over there, out of position as a safety. he did not have possession of the ball. If we had another look, here's another look. Let's see if we can see possession. Really, 
really can't it. tell when he really turns his back. Tell. Obviously, there was official right in position, and they never make a mistake. They did look at <laughs> they did look at a replay, but it was inconclusive. And here's Cox with a very Lousy. poor punt. That's and two it in takes a, row. a Detroit roll back to the 42-yard line. A 23-yard Steve Cox punt. Preparing themselves right here. That's two bad punts in a row. Lions hanging tough. They've got the ball back with good field position. Wayne Fonts, the defensive coordinator, with his troops behind him. William Gay, number 79. Curtis Green, number 62. Saw Eric Williams. That Lion defense has really hung hung in there since the midway of the second quarter. They've played with real intensity, yet it's discipline. They aren't just flying blind or staying in the defense he's called, and they're not getting whipped physically. And now Chuck Long in the line offense with another chance to tie. They trail 20 to 13. Blitz. Long back. Stands in tough. And that could be picked off. No, he got hit. He got hit as he threw the ball. Wanted to go deep for Chadwick. See, they took off with pressure on him just enough that he couldn't get rid of the ball cleanly. Now, see that heat coming up inside? Then Butts taking the offensive lineman right there, Kevin Glover, right back into the quarterback, and he couldn't finish his throw. Boy, that's what you call a collapsing pocket. When you have two defensive tackles, 6'7", 295, and 6'1", 285, they can put some heat up inside. Second and 10, 20 to 13, 6 16 remaining in the game. Four-man rush. Long, good pass. Chadwick, first down at the 30-yard line. He is, has great anticipation, this quarterback does. He gets it into the between people when the ball has to be there. When the guy's open, the ball's there. Good anticipation. That's a first down at the 30-yard line, 29 officially. Richie Pettibon, the defensive coordinator, calling the defenses. Played here himself as a fine, strong safety for George Allen. Played for the Rams, played for the Bears. 5.42 to go. Now he's coaching for his life. Blitz coming again. Long throws it short, incomplete, intended for Vito Cab, who he's, wanted a defensive holding call and didn't get it. He thought he got a little push there from Mel Kaufman. Rams and St. Louis are tied at 24. And Indianapolis leads Miami. That is the, the sec second. That's the longest, longest. streak. Yeah. Miami, uh, Indianapolis hasn't beaten Miami in forever. <laughs> it's a long time. And the Jets over Kansas City. Minnesota leads Tampa Bay by 13. Houston leading Pittsburgh by 17. Second and 10. Safety blitz coming. Long two-step drop. Chadwick incomplete. He dropped it. That should have been a complete pass. Third and 10. Good read. See, they don't have enough people to pick up everybody. They're blitzing. So what they do is break off the pattern to the left, right of your screens. Now, see, everybody's coming. He read the blitz. He broke off the pattern on what we call a side adjustment slant, but he just couldn't hang on to it and hit him right in the chest. The big mistake was to allow it to hit your chest because he has such great hands. You know, he'll catch anything with his hands. Just to put a period to a point we made, Miami has defeated Indianapolis with a Colts franchise 14 times in a row. The Redskins have defeated Detroit 13 times here and 10 in a row in all. Timeout. What for? Were they out of time? Second clock was down to one second, so Long saw that and turned and called timeout. 20 to 13, Washington leads it. They had a 17 to 3 lead at the half, and most of the fourth quarter has been played in Redskin territory. Washington came in leading the NFC East by two games over the Cowboys and the Eagles, with St. Louis at 3 and 5 and the Giants 2 and 6. Coming up next, the Giants take on the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia with Randall Cunningham, and others of you will see Green Bay against Seattle. This has been a surprisingly good game, Dick. It's a tighter football game than I thought it would be because you, as, you know, person that knows football, at least I should, you, you evaluate a team more than just one game back. You know, and I'm not surprised they're playing harder, you know, as a result of last week's game. But to hang in tough against what I think is one of the better football teams in football shows 
that really uh, they weren't playing real well before they started playing well. <laughs> you know, to be you know out of two ball games in a row, 24 to nothing, they just weren't making the kind of efforts they've made the last two weeks. Washington scored those 17 second quarter points. A field goal from Ali Hajashik and then two touchdown passes from Doug Williams. Now Chuck Long. If there was ever a time to convert a third down, it's to do it now. Third and 10. 5.31 to go in the game. And Long can't hear anything because of the crowd. Now you know what's going to come. Now, now they're playing games, too. Do you change the defense? Because they showed they were going to blitz and we're going to back out of it. They started backing out of it. So that tells Chuck Long, well, they were bluffing the blitz. All right, now at ti the timeout, do they change now and come with a blitz? Let's see what the Redskins do. Wilburn and Manley confer. Cat and mouse game here. Harvey Salem. Chuck, look at it. You know something? If Detroit wins a few ball games, they'll be able to do this at home in their closed stadium. That's right. <laughs> They'll be able to shout the quarterback out of the huddle. Ben Drive asked the Redskin players to urge the crowd to be quiet. They've been doing just the opposite. They did half-heartedly. <laughs> yeah, they've been doing just the opposite. Now it becomes a game, and you know that the minute they come to the line, this crowd will erupt again. You know, one time this happened to me for about 10 minutes in Miami on a Monday night game in 1981. We finally snapped it and threw an interception. I saw the New Orleans Saints do it for 19 minutes once right? in the early 70s. And I told my quarterback, hey, hey, don't snap the football. The official told him he had to snap it, and they did. He threw an interception. Just a minor point, but the officials will not start the 30-second clock during this commotion. Yeah, that's a major point, that one. Right. Second clock is not running. Go back to the huddle, Chuck. Don't, don't leave him hanging there. Don't do it. It's amazing. Now you'll, you'll have an offensive tackle say, geez, what was the snap? Was it on two? Was it on one? Uh, well, you know, it really, it happens. Go back to the huddle. And now a conversation with Joe Gibbs. Yeah. the coach to come out they can make this request and I've known coaches who refuse to do it yeah. well Joe Gibbs has got so much class he'd do it and Daryl Rogers appreciates yeah. the gesture <laughs> I tell you I coached for 23 years I don't ever remember smiling on the sideline I, I love it third and ten the crowd can't take coaching to the crowd. Number 51 coming to the right side of your screen. Monty Coleman did a cross charge back to the inside and got him down. See, now earlier they had shown the blitz and then backed out of it and weren't going to blitz. During the timeout periods, they changed it to the blitz. Watch Daryl Rogers saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Ah, oh, Chuck, you did it. <laughs> I was saying the same thing, Daryl. I've been there. Don't do it, don't do it, 
Well, he's going to do it. You still ought to be able to pick that linebacker up. Arnold, fair catch, called at the 13, 5, 19 to go in the ball game. A 29-yard punt, and the Redskins streak of sacks in games extends to 59, and give this one to the crowd. Ronnie Cohen, really, that should have been picked up. I don't think it's that complicated to pick that one up. I don't know what the coverage was called, but you ought to be able to pick that one up. Monty Coleman's been a good sacker over the years. That's his 30th sack in his career. His third one this year. Redskins hang on to a 20-13 lead. 5-19 to go. Didier is the motion man. Up the middle. There. Keith Griffin. First down. Watch Keith Griffin start this play to the right. Get the defense moving. He gets a nice cutoff block from the left side. Now watch him start to the right. Now he's going to get a cutoff block. And there it is right there. He gets back up inside through that little crack. And remember, he's a little guy. And Derek Brills, number 75, did a real nice job of getting the backside linebacker. Therefore, a nice positive game. 4.45 showing on the clock. for three or four and he got a couple of extra after the first contact once again go back to Chuck uh, to Daryl Rogers as Chuck Long was about to call the play and Rogers told him don't do it and here comes the sack and Rogers reaction <laughs> anger and frustration I think that's about as mad as he gets Pretty much in control of his emotions. Oh, all, all the time. Second and six. Griffin. Look at that quickness. And a good block from Clint Didier on James Griffin allowed him to get around the corner. The offensive left side of the line did an awful good job of walling people off. Now watch to the left side of the iron. See 88. See, look at him form that wall back in there. And there he is getting the block up underneath uh, Didier and finding that lane. But the, they had just drawn a wall right across that defense there, and they just couldn't run through those great big gorillas. Rams win their second of the year, and the Jets defeat Kansas City. Indianapolis leads the Colts, trying to break the string of 14 straight losses. Oh, good defense. Good defense on Griffin, and he's caught for a loss, but the clock now showing 3-10 and winding down. Big David Butts. The second oldest player in the NFL right now at 37 years old, five months. The, the other day before practice, he's throwing snowballs at the cameraman. Here he is, 37 years old. Hey, you never stop being a kid, do you? And the camera guy was on a tower 30 feet above the uh, <laughs> and he was, field. he was doing a good job. Minnesota over Tampa Bay and Houston leading Pittsburgh. Second and 10, 2.40 to go in the ball game. Oh, Bumble. Bumble. Lions got it. Detroit ball at the 40. Jimmy Williams gets it in front of his hometown fans. This is their counter gap play. They love this play. It's the number one. You'll see both the left guards and left tackle. Jacoby 66. Now someone makes a good play up underneath right there. I can't see who made that play, but they knocked the ball out. And Jimmy Williams recovers a fumble in his hometown. The old Woodrow Wilson High School graduate makes the big play. 2.32 to go in the ballgame. Second Washington turnover. You turn the ball over, you normally lose. All Especially three. the interception. All Throw two three. interceptions, you lose three out of four ball games. Well, the Lions have thrown three. I know it. They'll break the odds if they can come up with it. Here comes the crowd again. Not quite as vociferous as they were on that previous third and ten. But Long still having problems. They're backing out, Long. Long into the flat for James Jones, incomplete. Good coverage, too, by Mel Kaufman, because he had, the ball had to be thrown perfect to be complete, way out in front, because he had him right on the shoulder. Good pass defense by Mel Kaufman, who is a good pass defender and has been for a long time. 
2.27 to go in the ball game, and a sellout crowd surprised, I'm sure, by what has gone on here as the Lions, almost two touchdown underdogs, trail by seven with 2.27 to go. And for the third time in this quarter, they have the ball at the 40-yard line of Washington. They had a pass intercepted in the end zone and went out to the 15, and then they had Coming the after him. punt on a sack. Chadwick circles and is close for the first down at the 30. Nice side adjustment again. Now that's the same pass that they threw because that's an automatic pass dictated by the safety blitz. You can't block them all, but he didn't drop this one. <laughs> Here it is. Now you'll see there's Ted Bowles, number 23. He gets picked up inside. They turn the outside guy loose. They get the ball off to the pattern. Barry Wilburn forces him back to the inside, and then a defender comes back and makes the play. Here's Chadwick looking back at the inside. He sees the blitz. He doesn't matter what was called now. He doesn't care what was called in the huddle. He just adjusts and comes back inside. And that is, uh, who is that making the tackle? 65, Dave, Dave Butts. Butts. Defensive tackle. That's what you call hustle. And they need about two chain links for the first down. Eric Kippel, who's on the injured reserve list, talking with Chuck Law. Joe, Joe Ferguson. Ferguson. Now, Joe Ferguson in the middle with a hat. He's the oldest player in the NFL, is he not? Well, outside of Julius Adams, who just re-signed okay. with New England. But he's 37.7. Boy, am I impressed with this guy. You fans in Detroit, buy your season tickets. <laughs> After the whistle had blown, the clock continued to run. They reset it at 2.07. Now they run it back to two minutes. <laughs> That's the second time in this said, half they've had a problem with the clock. Now Darrell's... And so now officially we have the two-minute warning. It's a third and one for the Lions when we come back. And the Lions face third and about two inches. They have a tight end on the bench ejected from the game. Mark Lewis, only one tight end. You look kind of like the idea of a play fake and go deep here. Oh, yeah, I do, because you can make two inches on fourth down, and this could be a, a great way to get the big play, but they're going to run it. And they might have, yeah, they did get it. That's just good running. They had penetration. Daryl Grant was in the backfield back there, had a shot at him, but didn't hold up and didn't hold on to him, and he was really upset with himself. Carl Bernard got the first down. Look at it again. Watch the defensive surge to the left side of the uh, center there. Look at him. He get good penetration. He had him by the feet. The kid picks his feet up out of there. Number 50, Caldwell. Grabbing Caldwell. Grabbing, and he didn't get it down. Manley left side, Chadwick near side. First and ten. Four-man rush. And Long lets it go left side. Diving try. And it's caught. Boy, does he throw those comebacks nicely. That stops the clock at the 20-yard line with 1.18 to go. See, Pete Manley pushed the man-to-man -man coverage deep, pushing the, and then he turned and he came back, and the ball was right where it had to be, low into the outside. Very well done. RFK Stadium, where the Detroit Lions trailed the Washington Redskins 20-13. to They were down 17-3 to at the half. This has been a Lion-dominated fourth quarter, but they've had the ball three times inside the 40, Unable to score their last three possessions. They now have a minute 18 to go, and they trail by seven. Long back. Manley again. And is he out of bounds? No, he is tackled inbounds, and the clock continues to run with 1.10 to go. He calls a timeout. And that will leave the Lions with one timeout. Actually, I think that's a pretty good decision to call a timeout here. I would much rather have a quarterback feel comfortable and not rushed in these tight situations and go ahead and expend a tight out, n tight, a timeout knowing I have another. So, and, and then and get the definition over the sideline, bring, and, and bring that definition back to the huddle and see if we can execute just a phase better. 69 seconds remaining in this game. Let's find out what's going on elsewhere. Here's Brent Musburger. Well, for a dramatic development up in New England, Tom Ramsey, who's gone all the way in the second half, throws this touchdown pass. Great protection by the offensive line. Stanley Morgan's got it, and now the Patriots lead the Cowboys with time running out. Back to burn. Our score, 20 to 13, 109 remaining in the ball game, and the Lions have a fresh set of downs now at the 14-yard line. 13 trips they've made to RFK. 13 times they've been defeated. They trail by seven. Got him in. 
Intercepted. Intercepted. Picked off by Daryl Green, his third of the game. And Chuck Long is in desolate straits at the 29-yard line. I almost felt he was throwing the ball away. Just getting rid of it. gets his third interception of the ball game. Here he goes, walking off the field. He realizes he's made a mistake. Daryl Green's going the other way. Boy, is he a prophet. He said, I'll be back Sunday, and I'm going to stop these people from saying that I'm not playing well. Actually, I felt that he was just throwing the ball into the ground to get rid of it because he felt the pressure coming. Never know what was going through his mind. Let's take a look at that interception now. It'll be to the right side of your screen. Note the pressure that'll be put on Chuck as he looks left. He looks left. He's looked left. Now he turns right as Daryl Grant comes around, and he just sort of flips it over there. See, and it looked like, to me, he was just trying to flip it on the ground. Meantime, Doug timeout Williams Detroit. takes it. Last timeout. Balls down, and the Lions call their final timeout with 57 seconds to go. Boy. Watch Daryl Rogers. React to the interception. Boy, what a miserable feeling that is. That's all part of being in this league, Chuck. You can see he's just emotionally drained right now. And he'll blame himself for a while, but I'll tell you this. They wouldn't have been in the position they're in if he hadn't just done a super job. For the day, long 23 of 37, 249, but four interceptions, three by that man who is hanging on to the last one. You throw two interceptions in this league, you lose three out of four games. That's just the history of it. There he's being talked to by Eric Hipple, giving a little counsel and say, hey, I've been there before. That's exactly what he's doing, I'll bet. Doesn't get any easier for Detroit. They're at Chicago next week. The Redskins, who apparently now will go 7-2, and two, are at home Monday night against the Rams. Daryl's got these guys going. He's got them put back together since the strike. The coaching staff's doing a good job, and he's got them playing winning football. Cowboys were trailing New England by three points, 17 to 14. They apparently will fall to four and five. Philadelphia takes on the Giants next on CBS. St. Louis lost today to the Los Angeles Rams. So the Redskins can really get a cushion in this division with a giant victory today. The Giants and Philadelphia next, or some of you will see Green Bay against Seattle. As the final few seconds wind down, and it's 14 unsuccessful trips to RFK for, Darryl, for uh, the Detroit Lions, and Joe Gibbs' team hangs on to win it by seven. I tell you, the Detroit Lions grew another foot today. If they keep doing this, they're going to be beating playoff teams before the season's over. For Dick Vermeil, I'm Bern Lundquist saying so long from RFK, where our final score was 20 to 13. CBS sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after these words from your local station.